Everyone, remain calm. Back for more, huh? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ah. That's how it always starts. But then later, there's running and then screaming. Somebody talk to me. What is happening? Welcome. Jurassic World. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. How long is it going to take for that to spread around the globe? <laughs> this was all John Hammond's dream. Hold on to your butt. Seriously? Well, we're back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 187th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. All right, so I am fairly certain that this is the comeback that you've all been waiting for. So in this episode, we finally return to the post office with all of your submissions for the Jurassic Mailbag. Jennifer Tarek once again joins me to sift through that mailbag, get to the bottom of all your thoughts and concerns, and for sure not answer a single one of those questions. But that's how the mailbag works, folks. I was so excited to finally get back to recording the mailbag with Jen and listening to all your voicemails and emails and everything that you guys sent in over the past few months. It's been a long road, and I'm finally excited to dive into some of those here today. Just in case you want to be a part of the next Jurassic Mailbag, you can call our voicemail line at 732-825-7763. You can email us any kind of audio files or your questions to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com, or you could head to our contact page on JurassicParkPodcast.com and fill out our contact form. Now, even though you haven't heard this month's episode just yet, we are already collecting questions for the next mailbag. But before we get this long episode going, we have a few things to talk about here. So over on YouTube, of course, last week we had a few toy hunts, so make sure to go track those down. I think I did one by myself, and I think I also did one with Lincoln, so make sure to go watch those. I also did review the Tapijara, which is a really cool, um, interesting flying uh, creature, dinosaur, whatever you want to call it. I know it's not a dinosaur, guys, but um, that one is so cool. One of my favorite ones for sure. And uh, this week, we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline. There should be some Jurassic World live tour content, some more reviews, some more uh, store visits and all that. There's a lot coming down the pike. So make sure to check us out over on YouTube. Subscribe, like, share those videos around. We'd really appreciate it. Also, last week on our website, JurassicParkPodcast.com, James Ronan actually went through his top five moments from Jurassic Park. His list was comprised of all of his favorite film moments from the movie. Um, And when you think about it, really, there are so many iconic moments from Jurassic Park. Some that are very innocent and quiet, and some that are loud and crazy and the, the coolest things that you've ever seen on screen. So I think it's interesting to kind of sit back and think of those five moments that really touched you the most in Jurassic Park. So think about yours and make sure to go check out James' article on our website. Uh, It was a great write-up, so make sure to check it out. Now, next up, I did want to mention that there were two thefts from Jurassic actors last week. So Jeff Goldblum had some items stolen from him while him and his family were on a beach uh, just hanging out together on on vacation, I guess. So so sorry to Jeff and his family. That that is a, a real bummer. But also... Vanessa Lee Chester, uh, who played Kelly uh, in in The Lost World, actually had many of her prized Lost World items stolen from her. Um, it was, you know, all very unique memorabilia that was personal and memorable to her. And it's obviously a horrible thing to have happen, to have that legacy just stolen right out from under you. Um, let me actually read a tweet here from Vanessa. Jurassic Park and Lost World fans, my mom just called with unfortunate news that someone broke in and stole a bunch of my Lost World memorabilia. Toys, magazines, photos, memories. If any of you happen to stumble upon any Kelly Malcolm items that look too personal, please DM me. 
So yeah, please, just like Vanessa said, if you guys see anything out of the ordinary on the market pertaining to Kelly Malcolm or Vanessa Lee Chester, please try to let Vanessa know. Um, Hopefully, she'll be able to track down some of the items that were lost. So definitely be vigilant out there uh, and try to help out. But trying to get past that bummer news, we've got a long episode ahead of us. So why don't we get this episode kicked off by digging into the Jurassic Mailbag. Jurassic Mailbag. 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 Jurassic Mailbag never fails. It makes me wet my dino tails. And Brad and Jen, your Jurassic Mail. It's Jurassic Mailbag with Brad Jost and Jennifer Tarek. We're back inside the giant Jurassic Mailbag, this time for the month, or months of January, February, March, April, and of course here in May, it's finally time to reopen that mailbag. Here's some great questions, fail at probably answering the aforementioned questions, and get back to you with a segment that I hopefully think that you're all going to love. Uh, and, uh, none of this ensuing hilarity would be possible without the help of my good friend here, Jennifer Tarek. How you doing, Jen? Hi. How old are we? I... (laughs) (laughs) We're off to a good start already. (laughs) I know. We already aged like six months. (laughs) Seriously, I know. I I feel bad because... Some of these, um, you know, things that we've had laying around here have been prior to that six months or, you know, just these past five, six months or whatever since we last recorded. And yeah, it's, oh man, I feel bad. Like I said, we're, we're going to be listening to a lot of that today. So, um, I have stuff, you know, from December onwards probably. And, you know, recently, so there's going to be a lot of stuff, some, some voicemails, MP3s, uh, emails, of course. You, I know you guys love to make me read, so um, I'll definitely be reading some of those those uh, emails as well. But uh, how's how how have things been? You've been all right in the, in the past few months. Yeah, thing things have been going. I'm still here, which is nice. Um, but yeah, things it feels like yesterday when we did this anyway. So that's scary. I know, right? It doesn't seem like that long has passed. But I'm super excited to be back. I miss the mailbag. I miss our listeners and our questions and our inability to answer anything uh, that everyone thinks we can. No, I know. I know. And, you know, I did that survey um, over the hiatus just to see what kind of things people wanted to hear, uh, what changes could we make and stuff like that. And it seemed like uh, pretty overwhelming that people really loved what we do in the mailbag. So I don't think we're going to really change the format all that much. Um really at at all so why don't we go ahead and just dive uh straight into what we always do and that's listen to listen to some voicemails so we're gonna start off with um a buddy of mine ryan from the force cast he uh sent in an mp3 so uh let's take a listen hey brad and jen if jen is on this episode it's ryan from the force cast uh how are you guys doing Glad to see that the show is back, Brad, and the mailbag. Yes. So, I moved to Orlando about six months ago, and Brad, you and I have talked before online about how we are both massive theme park fans, Universal, Disney. Of course, since I moved to Orlando six months ago, I am an annual pass holder of both. But I was at Universal the other day, Islands of Adventure, and I was in the Jurassic uh, area, and to be fair, they are doing construction, but... You know, it's really cool to see the gates. It's really cool to see, like, the Discovery Center. It's really cool to see the gift shop and, and obviously, uh, the the ride. But, you know, I was thinking about sort of the new trend of creating massive, immersive lands based on IPs that you can actually go to the world. Harry Potter, Star Wars, Nintendo Land's coming, Marvel's out in California. And Jurassic is impressive for when it was built, But, you know, I went to the popcorn stand at Jurassic, and it wasn't in a Jurassic Park bucket. It was just in a Universal bucket. So it's not full theming all the way around. Uh, The employees are Universal employees. They don't pretend like they're actually working at Jurassic Park, for the most part, except for maybe the raptor encounter. 
But I was just thinking about if it was made today instead. Let's say that Jurassic Park never existed in the parks, Hollywood or Orlando. My question, I have three questions. My number one question is, do you think that Universal would put all their chips to the middle of the table on Jurassic World since the return of Jurassic in the theaters and make a massive Harry Potter style world, but for Jurassic World where everybody is in costume, everybody's in theming, uh, you actually go to Jurassic World or Jurassic Park, either one. And what do you think that would look like? So that's question one and two. What do you think that would look like? Do you think they would do it? And what would be your ideal, fully immersive Jurassic World addition to the Universal theme parks? Oh, well, let's just pause it right there then. Um, you know, I always tend to forget what everybody says anyway. So um, oh, I'm taking notes. Like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm literally typing notes right now <laughs> you're you're more prepared than i am i i started to look around i'm like i forgot my notebook tonight <laughs> usually i write this stuff down but um uh so oh man you know uh he's got a good point because the the parks as of right now uh the way they stand they're supposed to be extensions of jurassic park they're not they're not even supposed to be jurassic park they're you know, the Hollywood version, the Orlando version. Um, so it does kind of stink, though, that, like, they don't really fully immerse you in that environment, you know, they like like you said. Um, but it's actually really funny. This uh, past week, my other podcast, Grim Grinning Hosts, um, I just so happened to bring up the topic of immersion. And what is it – what is the point of it uh, – does it matter if you're fully invested or fully sold on the concept? Um, and I talked a lot about actually, um, you know, his realm there, uh, you know, Ryan talks about, uh, star Wars all the time on his show. So I was talking about that because, you know, recently at star Wars celebration, they were showing off these, um, Coca-Cola, um, I don't know if you saw them, Jen, did you see that? I did. You- okay. I-, I listened to them at Disney podcast and they were bringing this up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, it's basically, you know, just like a, if for people who don't know, it looks like a, almost like a Christmas ball that you would hang on your, your tree, but it's called a thermal, thermal detonator. And it's, you know, shaped like something out of the star Wars universe. And instead of just saying Coca-Cola on there, it says something, you know, in the Arabic language that's from star Wars. So, um, well, I guess it says Coca-Cola. Um, but they have that, they have Sprite, I believe, and Dasani water. So, it's cool and really innovative to make those kind of products to sell you on the universe. Um, but I always wonder, like, does it matter that you're being like 100% sold? Because you, you're you always going to know, like, you're in a theme park. You're not really in uh, another pl- or on another planet or like on Pandora or Batu or in Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Does that matter to you, Jen? Do you feel like you're fully immersed or do you know, like, hey, I'm just it's just fine. Like if they don't sell me on every aspect. Oh, this is a great question. I loved where I loved where he was going with this question. I've been taking so many notes, especially with what you were just saying. I was also taking notes and um, <laughs> I know cause I like, there's so much to talk about on this. Cause we haven't talked about the new expansion with Jurassic park or any of that. Cause we missed all that since the last mailbag. It was cr- but, um, a crazy amount of news popped up while we were going. I know, but I, to answer his question really quickly, I do think that they would have made a Jurassic World in the likes of Harry Potter and um, Star Wars had it been today. I, I do think they would have, but Jurassic Park missed that boat, and for some reason they're not going to get a raft to get that boat. It's just dead in the water, and that's so sad. But um, back to the immersion thing. I truly love as much as immersion, immersion as possible because... I think what Disney's trying to do with Star Wars is they're like touching on the Comic Con side of things. And in Comic Con, you're so immersed in that and it's getting more and more so. Like, um, I went to the movies this weekend and people were dressed up as Avenger people. So that whole immersion and being who you want and make believe and all of that thing, embodiment, is crossing over into our world. Clearly, if it's just at my neighborhood theater and then Disney's encouraging this. Yeah. And I think Disney even has. They're doing that Star Wars hotel, and then they have, like, Star Wars costumes you could buy, but they're not really costumes. They're, like, in, like Harry Potter's robes. Yeah, so exactly. Like that. In-world so, attire, yeah. Yeah, so just like that, with those two things. I mean, that's a new thing, and I 
coming. And I love that. I truly love that. And if Jurassic were to even touch a fraction of that, that would be amazing. I I really love the immersion. I say immerse me beyond reason. <laughs> so, Go for it. So Universal is um, making a new theme park uh, down in Orlando. It's it's you know supposed to be called Fantastic World. It's all rumored at this point, but it seems pretty um, pretty set in motion. Um, and what they one of the plans that they're thinking of is um, you know creating all these different lands. So it's it's going to not be a typical theme park where. It's like a bunch of rides in a land, you know, like Adventureland. You have a bunch of different um, attractions in Disney. You know, it's like Pirates and uh, Jungle Cruise and Magic Carpet Ride and all that stuff. So it's like a bunch of different things. But they want to include full immersive stuff like Harry Potter for each section of the park. Isn't that like Islands of Adventure, like what they well, have now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. But that one is is – not as um not as immersive and plus one of the things that they're they're thinking of doing is only adding uh essentially one entry or or one front entry to each of these lands so you can't go between them all like you can in islands of adventure yeah so um i think one of the uh actually they sent out a survey recently to uh, i don't know season pass holders or something like that um annual pass holders maybe and it was a question of something like what what would you rather would you rather an immersive land that has you know fully uh you know immersive stuff within that property that ip do you want a land that has you know random attractions that don't necessarily tie together do you want a land with highly themed attractions, but not a highly themed land. Uh, do you want a land that's highly themed, but less highly themed attractions? So it was like all these varied options uh, that people could vote on. And I think, you know, they're trying to learn from the past and see what people want now. And it really feels like people really want immersive lands. Um, and that's the thing that they're probably going to be doing as far as uh, universal Beijing is concerned because they're building that park or, you know, starting to build um, somewhat soon. I think they're sending people out there pretty right right now, actually, um, to start on that project. So there is the intention to build a full Jurassic World land out there. So that'll be really cool. And I think that's what Ryan's talking about here is a full land that is actually just Jurassic World. Like you're not visiting Jurassic World China. Or something like that. You're actually visiting Jurassic World. The team members will be in the outfits, selling the story, like they do in Pandora or, you know, soon to be in Star Wars, uh, Galaxy's Edge. So I think it's going to be in the future. You'll see that more and more for Jurassic. But it is still interesting in Florida because it's kind of a mishmash of, of things right now. And with all the construction, they're planning on adding a roller coaster um, themed to Owen slash Raptors, supposedly. So how will that tie into the Jurassic Park theming that's there? Will it most likely be eventually changed to Jurassic World fully? Probably. And as soon as the ride it gets opened, it'll probably change to Jurassic World li- uh, ride out here as well. Um, well, here's the problem with everything about the U.S. parks. California obviously has no room, yeah, and they no, can't nothing. do anything remotely like that with theming. But Orlando, they're making that other park, as you said, Fantastic Worlds or whatever, and they're not even having Jurassic World in that park. Now, that is <sighs> the perfect missed opportunity again. They've been missing Jurassic opportunities since day one because the Kong ride back in that day should have been a Jurassic Jeep ride. And then, and then even if they didn't want to ex- put World in the new park, it, then make the Jeep ride World and kind of move over and make like a li- little mini extension or something. I mean, no one cares. This was cool and better. Yeah. But I mean, ripping out the front facade and putting that ugly coaster in for no reason other than to just have a coaster is painful. And then mixing the brands by having Jurassic World coaster but having park water ride but then that river adventure might turn into a world eventually like california it's just a, it's kind of a, a mess. mismatch yeah. of just mess and yeah unfortunately we'll never see what shanghai is getting because honestly that should be in the fantastic world's new park that's such a mistake i think so too i um 
I fully get that. I I think you should just ignore, like you should just forget about what you have with Jurassic Park, uh, work on that eventually. But you should be focusing on Jurassic World because that's your moneymaker right now. Um, and if you're if you're creating good attractions, which I've seen some stuff as far as what they could be building out in, in China, and it looks really awesome. So if they were to bring that here, it would be phenomenal and people would love it. And it wouldn't matter if it's Jurassic. It's not Jurassic Park anymore. Um, So I think I think it would be fun. That's the two most annoying things ever is because they don't even have an excuse because they're building a new park. They could totally put it there. And Jurassic sells merchandise like ridiculous merchandise. Yeah. Well, I think so stupid. I, you know, there's a whole lot of talk about what the new park is going to be and, and supposedly all that. So, um, it's still up in the air, it seems at the moment. Um, but I know there was talk of a universal monsters section. So you have like Frankenstein, werewolf, mummy, Dracula kind of deal. Um, you'll obviously get, uh, Nintendo stuff all over the place. You could probably see an extension of Harry Potter there. Um, so it's funny that they'll, they're, they're perfectly intent on having Harry all over the place, you know, in, in at least the two parks now, but they can't have Jurassic in two parks. That's, I don't know. That's their own property too. It's the, they own yeah. that property. They don't own that's Harry like Potter. Their only property that they own. That is a lot like they have fast and furious is a big money making movie, but it's not one for the parks. Like Jurassic is the perfect park franchise. Yeah. They and just they don't spend money on their own properties. Yeah make any sense at all it's just really disappointing because i know um whenever they did kind of they didn't announce anything but whenever the rumors switched away from taking jurassic world out of the new park i i was like oh my this is and then they announced that coaster like right after it and i'm like this is a mess this is such a mess jurassic is the short straw on everything over there well we'll see hopefully it's one of those things where like they feed out the information that, hey, Jurassic's not going to be in this park just to see the outrage, hopefully. So, you know, <laughs> share your outrage with Universal. Be like, hey, why is it not there? Um, but, uh, you know, let's move on here. We we have more questions here. I don't remember from... what the questions were. What was You had like three questions. Did we even well, answer them? Yeah, it was, it was about the um, immersion. What would you want to see? Um, okay. So is there anything specifically you would want to see out of a uh, Jurassic World fully themed area? Um, well, I think everyone would like a, a gyrosphere ride, some kind of, um, uh, like, you know, what's, what are those called? Virtual reality kind of things, maybe, like, in a, it would be all screens, but it would still be a neat thing. And then, I, I love that Jeep ride that they have at Kong, that could definitely have been a Jurassic World tour ride. Um, and I think we talked about, or I talked about this with somebody, about, like, where the lagoon is, have, like, an underwater restaurant there and have like the mosasaurus swim by oh my god that would be awesome yeah that would be fantastic that's what i want i don't know if you've said that here or not but that sounds wonderful i, <laughs> I would love I to see that that with somebody <laughs> yeah that Somewhere. that 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 could be like really really cool universal what are you doing creative guys get this get, get this thing going like that's that's one of the coolest ideas i've heard yet um okay. because they're they're adding screens and stuff to the jurassic world ride out in california and that's one of the sections with the mosasaurus and it looks pretty cool and there's new tech and all that involved in the ride so you know bring that to uh orlando and and have like a restaurant that would be really cool imagine if like the glass started cracking while you're there and you think you're in trouble and and you think the restaurant's gonna get flooded i don't know if they would do that for safety reasons (laughs) (laughs) True, but, but true. Yeah. But I don't know how they would uncrack it either and then recrack it. But because um, I don't, Disney does it with their coral reef restaurant and their aquariums and that. I mean, you could totally just build that and make it all screens and maybe put some real fish if you want to make it a real aquarium kind of thing. And oh, that'd be so awesome. That would be like going under, if it's under the visitor center or like you go one floor below or something. Yeah. I mean, I would love that gyrosphere ride too. Um, it's kind of hard to say because it's it's not really – they haven't really given us mm. a ton as far as rides would be concerned aside from the obvious gyrosphere. Um, you know, we have that like Cretaceous cruise or something like that with the uh, kayaks. Um, I just thought of the thing I want that I think we talked about before, but it's not a Jurassic World ride though. But it's like that Mr. DNA slow thing. Oh, and then yeah, have yeah. 
dinosaurs like come out of the ceiling or come out behind you and like like the carousel of progress but have the whole back open and like yeah. dark and then whenever you sit down you don't even notice that and then eventually dinosaurs are behind you because it's all like animatronics in the dark behind you and then they like jump out and like they're with you the whole time you just don't know it and they yeah come out. i've always kind of wanted that that's oh, such a good idea too. for for like down below the discovery center um but yeah, it's not world, but yeah. No, it would be so interesting to see them transform that land. I don't know how they would do it at this, you know, current uh, like iteration. Just the way it is fully Jurassic Park, it would be well, hard to switch it over. I think is not the right direction. No, I mean it'll be fun. I'm I'm looking forward to riding a coaster, but not necessarily um, in Jurassic. So I've right. talked about well, that a ton. What's frustrating is Harry Potter is getting a coaster too, not that kind, but it's still like an immersive, the most immersive coaster in the world. And then over <laughs> here, Jurassic Park gets that. Just yeah, yeah, fair. it should be a, a little bit above lightly themed, so medium themed. It's not going to be heavy like Hagrid, um, mm. but it'll be in the middle somewhere probably. Um, there should be a few a few different scenes, a few different um, things to see. You know, whether it's Raptor or animatronics or. Um, stuff like that. I don't know throughout the ride, so it'll be interesting. Um, I'm I'm questioning the immersive elements of Hagrid as well, just because um, it seems like a ride that is better suited for the dark. You know, when you're outside riding that coaster in the dark, that would be yeah. really cool and sell the story a little bit more. But um, in the daytime, it'll be interesting. I wonder how that will really pay off. But yeah, let's uh, let's finish his question here. See what else he had to say. Oh gosh! Oh. And then number two there we slash go. three, uh, we do know that there are changes coming. So obviously, out in Hollywood, the the river ride is getting redone. Uh, we have some details on that. There's a Jurassic coaster coming to Orlando. But my question is, what do you think these rides should be? Uh, what can you speculate on what the coaster might be? Uh, what about the details for the, the redo of the river ride? I'm sure that's coming to Orlando too. Uh, and what do you think it's possible for them to capture the true essence of Jurassic? Because the, the boat ride is my favorite ride. The animatronics should be redone. But do you think they're going to lose something if they go to like a screen-based uh, ride and not do impressive animatronics? Because if they could do a dinosaur-style ride from Animal Kingdom but just update and make it a 2019 ride instead of like a 2000 ride. Uh, Do you think they have the chance to still use the space that they have to create immersive and authentic Jurassic experiences? So I know that's a lot, but just Brad, Jen, if Jen's on this one, go on a theme park rant. Go on a theme park tangent. We already have. (laughs) Anyways, when you're in Orlando, hit me up. Let's go to Galaxy's Edge. Yes. and, uh, And maybe hit on the river adventure i'm uh, i'm down for anything uh love your show and looking forward to talk to you guys later well thank you dude um i love your show as well i've been listening to the the force cast for a while i know i'm a huge star wars fan jen what about you are you <laughs> <laughs> so about that river adventure um <laughs> I think well, we answered so much of that with the predictions of the roller coaster and what that'll be. But I, what was his part? Oh, the animatronics. Um, yeah. I think the rumor is that there is going to be a lot of animatronics. That it's they're not going away. It's just they're adding that one screen to enclose it. But I think there's going to be a lot of animatronics still. I've heard uh, a few different things as far as the ride is concerned. Uh, you know, so when the ride starts, um, you go up the lift hill. And around a corner, so there should be a fossil skeleton of a Mosasaurus. Um, now, bear with me. I'm not sure if this is fully accurate, but that's what I've heard. Um, and then it somehow transitions into a live anima, or uh, I don't know what it is, a live Mosasaurus. I don't know how that portion is going to be working. Um, but you'll see the the tagline underneath: "When dinosaurs ruled the earth." You'll go around the bend, and I think like where the gates would be, you would enter in to the indoor section, a fully like indoor area um, with the screens. So I just don't know how this will sell the story again with the immersion um, because I'm going uphill to go into an underwater viewing platform. It does. That doesn't make sense to me unless like the loading dock for the ride is even lower than the Mosasaurus 
platform, which I don't I don't get. But um, so I think there's going to be two screen areas if I if I've heard correctly. So you'll have that first one and then maybe one later on. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Maybe it's like right before the lift hill. Um, but I you know, I'm hearing that there will be the Raptors. You'll see the Raptors, um, whether it's blue or and crew. I'm not too sure. Um, I think it might be, though. Um, but a lot of the animatronics that you know and, I don't know, maybe love from the <laughs> original, whether they're, you know, broken or not, um, I think half of them might be gone from there. But uh, a, a lot of them will still be intact because I think a lot of it's just going to be indoors now. So there will be a smaller portion that's outside. Um you know, I think like there's maybe Stegosaurus and uh, Parasaurolophus. I think that's maybe still happening the same way. Um, but yeah, and then of course the Indominus and the T Rex at the top. Uh, maybe Blue will play into that. I don't know. Um, but that's really the, how that works out. Um, like I said, the the roller coaster should have a few different scenes, but it's going to have multi launch launches on the ride. So it'll be fast. It'll be tall. Um, and potentially themed to Owen and the Raptors. I don't know if they'll be, if they'll overtly be Jurassic World, but I think with those elements, you'll just assume it is. So maybe it'll blend the land by not going full Jurassic World and just going Owen and Raptors. Would that sell it for you or no? Well, well, here's one thought really quick. So we're mixing between the two because as of right now, Florida has the river adventure they're not touching it it's not yeah. going to Jurassic world right so when we're talking about the river adventure changes we mean in california and we're talking about the coaster we mean in orlando so yep. Yep. it's weird mix of franchise movies i mean i already i'm like why are we having an owen raptor coaster where you still have the river adventure just down the way like it's, well it's a mess. i mean it, it is a mess but you also have um Let's see. That coaster is most likely not going to open until Jurassic World 3. So maybe um, a few months before that movie opens. So, there, I mean, there is the potential, um, whether they want to throw the construction crews at the River Adventure, um, they could get that done pretty quick. Because this ride only took since September. It's been closed since September. So that's, uh, when, when did that close? At the beginning, I think. So all of September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Talking eight months now, and they could do that. I mean, they could turn that around, um, in yeah. in probably uh, around the same time, or maybe even shorter, because they already know what they're up to. Um, but what was your co- coaster question? I totally just ignored it. I'm mistaken. Um, I guess would it sell you if it was lightly themed to Jurassic World, but just like mostly just involving Owen and the Raptors? but still selling you on the Jurassic Park land. Um, I don't know if that coaster can ever sell me, to be honest. Just, <laughs> just not because, for many reasons. I'm not huge on those kinds of coasters in the first place. Like, I'll ride some of them. I might ride it once, maybe. I have to look at it first. But first of all, there's that. Second, I don't see how any coaster really fits whenever you're destroying the beautiful, like, lagoon front that they have there. That's for yeah. me. And then... I don't know. I don't know if that coaster will ever really sell me because, again, what's the story of the park? Are we visiting the park? Are we visiting a version of the park? Are they totally are losing their storyline. So I don't even know what this coaster is in the story. So I don't know if it's ever going to really sell me as an immersive element. So, so go back to that thing that I was mentioning earlier about um, the surveys that went out. So what if their intention with this land is is to make – an immersive land, but filled with random attractions that don't necessarily correlate. So instead of doing an immersive, fully Jurassic World, you're doing it a fully Jurassic, but you can interchange with the, the attractions. Mm, no, the, the like organizer that? in me just can't do that. Like, I, I don't. I don't necessarily very, mind that. I don't know. I do. I. Huh. I know. I don't like mixing park and world together. I don't like, I don't even like the idea. I know the original story was that you're visiting a version of Jurassic land or whatever. And I don't (laughs) even like that so much. I'd rather just visit the park or visit Jurassic world operating park or world or the operating system. I don't like it just being kind of an inspired by or a mishmash. I'm, I'm 
I don't know. I'm very specific that way that I like to visit the actual real. Like if they're going to go for it, go for it. Like how Harry Potter's doing it. Like they have their Hogsmeade area. They have their other one. I don't know Harry Potter, but they have their two things <laughs> and it's very specific and you know where you are and it, it doesn't mix them. It tries not to mix them yeah. anyway. And, and I like that. I like that organized, that straight line, like you know where you are. Well, yeah, your story, your story is kind of confusing when you're talking about different, uh, you know, if you have Jurassic Park, the ride or the river adventure, and then you have some sort of Jurassic World ride. Yeah, um, it's messy. And even if it is like, hey, this is Jurassic Park Orlando, it does kind of get confusing when you're talking to people when you have walk around characters or people in stores that are just selling you this stuff. Like if they all have this immersive story to tell. Um, like I do love the fact that there are the uh, scientists and uh, people downstairs in the Discovery Center that, you know, showcase the baby triceratops and the raptor hatching. Um, so that's really cool. I love that element. But yeah, when you're like, yes, us here at Jurassic Park here in Orlando uh, learned from the mistakes of Nublar, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it, it just becomes too much of a story to tell instead of just saying us here at Isla Nublar, you know, Jurassic World, uh, we blah, blah, blah. It's easier to tell that story, I think. Yes, exactly. And that's exactly why Jurassic Park kind of missed that boat because you cannot have an operating Jurassic Park because Jurassic Park is never operating. So I get why they did that. But now they have an operating park fully open operating park and they could they're just kind of stuck now there i could see their problem like they're like do we just redo it all do we take out everything do we make it jurassic world like what do we do so they're just kind of playing with it a little bit but um yeah i see what you're saying though because you can't have a fully operating operating you can't even have like a fully operating jurassic park on the last day of operation before everything goes nuts because they never operated at all so that's a hard story to get out of the first one yeah for a park yeah, and I mean that you're always going to stick yourself in a particular time slot. Like now, California is going to be set on the last day, basically, mm -hmm. of Jurassic World because in that ride you're going to have the Indominus Rex broken out and fighting the T Rex. So you're always going to stick yourself somewhere in the timeline, um, unless it was like a generic uh, dinosaur attraction. But you know, when you're talking, when Ryan, Ryan was talking about the animatronics and stuff before, it's like, it's kind of hard to sell a dinosaur attraction that's not encountering some sort of problem or something like that, especially if it's outdoors. Like, they, those things just wear down a little too quick. So I'm, I'm interested to see what steps they're taking for Hagrid's uh, motorbike adventure coaster, tr you know, magical creature journey, longest name in the entire world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I forgot what my point was, <laughs> but I'm interested to see what steps they take with that ride to uh, ensure that those animatronics don't break down over time or much quicker than, say, the Jurassic ones did. So, yeah. I have one more quick point, and I, we are beating this horse to Oh, death, my God. I, we, yeah, I, it's a 30-minute question. <laughs> I know. He's Sorry. getting his tangent, but I always hear the, the thing of we can't do another – uh, Jurassic Park ride in the land because you already have the dinosaur escaping in the in the river adventure and you can't repeat the same story. But honestly, I don't get that argument because right next door to the Jeep, you could have had that river adventure how it is and then made the Jeep ride. Just you're on the Jeep and like cool stuff happens. Like that does not bother me. Like having stuff escape on different rides in the same land. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think that's kind of tough to be honest. Um, I don't know. It, and it's kind of like the Harry Potter stuff on the other side. You have this like dragon that escapes and doesn't destroy the um, bank, Gringotts bank, like it does in the movies and all that. So that, that one is interesting because like it takes the story from the movie and manipulates, manipulates it a little bit differently than the way it went in the movie. Um, even sort of like the Jurassic world rides are going to do. It's like those, the T-Rex and the Indominus never fought at the top of, uh, a, a flume ride like that never happened right um but i don't know i i think it's interesting when you place yourself like at a breakout and then you go and you get off that ride you're like Phew, i just made it out of the grips of a dinosaur that was a close one and then you go and you wait online for another ride at, an, at a park that should be on lockdown because dinosaurs are escaping right like yeah but i don't know i i don't know how, yeah. like like he was talking about immersion i don't know how you sell that fully and not think, I'm just in a theme park. 
You know, I know. that's where I, I mean, am. If you if you give me two really cool rides that are just mind blowingly awesome and they kind of have the same storyline, I don't care. <laughs> like just if yeah. they're really awesome, immersive, <laughs> and cool, totally fine. Well, that's it for the mailbag today. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan, for the amazing question. We just spent the entire time talking about oh, theme parks. <laughs> well, you know, if anyone else asks us about the park now and the rest of the mailbag questions, you'd be like, well, we already Next. answered that. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Thanks again, Ryan. That was awesome. Uh, next one here is uh, another voicemail from Donnie. So let's uh, take a listen. Hey, Brad. Hey, Jen. Uh, my name is Donnie. I'm a relatively new listener. I started listening over the summer, and um, your podcast definitely helped my work days go by a lot smoother and more enjoyable. So thank you for that. But uh, my question is, how do you guys expect the new movie to pick up as in, like, what do you think the opening scene would be? Um, I was kind of thinking about this the other day, and I kind of think it would be a really cool, although it would be pretty heartbreaking, I think it would be really, really cool if um, we're on the mainland now and some guy has been hired or contracted to hunt down some of the dinosaurs, and they're starting with the raptors. And, like I said, I'd, it's heartbreaking, but it would just be kind of a cool concept. Um so he starts with the raptors, and let's say life found the way, and Blue ended up having like a litter of a litter of babies, and this guy had one of them in his sight, and he shot the raptor, and then he goes over to make sure that it was dead, and it turns out like he radios in to like a dispatch, and he says like Muldoon here or something like that. Like it'd be really cool if it was the son of Muldoon, because. <laughs> I assume he probably grew, if Muldoon had a son, he grew up knowing what happened to his dad, and he kind of followed in his footsteps in the uh, in the in the sense that he's a hunter, but he's kind of grew up hating dinosaurs and raptors in particular because of what happened to his dad. And I think that'd be kind of a really cool opening sequence, but it'd be even better if Blue herself kind of came back out and got him or something. But I don't know, that's just me. I thought that'd be kind of a cool aspect to kind of tie in Muldoon back into the story because I don't think that Muldoon got all the credit that he deserved. I thought Muldoon was a very awesome character and I just kind of hated the way that uh, that he went out. So that's just my two piece. Uh, just um, wanted to call and see what you guys thought about that. So um, keep up the good work. I enjoy the podcast and you guys have a good one. Bye. Thanks, dude. Um, what do you think of that? That's kind of interesting. Well, I I just think it's fascinating that someone goes back and listens to all our old podcasts. Like that's <laughs> pretty cool. So thank you for that. Yeah, and yeah. making your making your way through. Um. Well, here's the thing with that. That's a great theory. I love bringing old characters back in, and I know Nedry's son was also thrown around by the fandom. So any way to bring new generations of old characters in, I know people would be would be loving that. But the only thing about how it starts, we know that time moves, and it's going to be three years later, and wouldn't they have already captured all of the dinosaurs and we'll be past that? Like, we're going to miss that part, I feel like. Do you think so? I I, I mean, maybe. Um, you would assume, like, the big ones would be captured, right? Like, uh, the T-Rex. Um, unless the... unless there's something that happens where they just kind of leave them alone and nah, that, um, that'll never happen like that would never happen just think of all the people that would be out there oh i know hunting but... hunting them down just just to just to get a a shot off on a dinosaur you know just to say they track them down they'll literally be the living embodiment of roland tembo from the lost world you know he wants to hunt that uh you know predator out there so i think people would be doing that for sure and probably would end up killing off a lot of these things unfortunately and like he said like you know maybe he did maybe he shot something out there but hasn't colin said a million times that he wants it to be like a world like jurassic world where there's dinosaurs everywhere and living amongst people yeah there's gonna be there there's gonna have to be some kind of reason for that and i don't know if like it's weird to say because i don't know how he's gonna get there because it's not like the government's gonna protect them they didn't do it the first time and it's not like they're going to put them in a reserve because that won't work, I don't think. And I don't really know how he, how we're going to get to living amongst them. But however we get there, I think it might start that way. Like just, a, I don't know, a kid doing something and just like having a dinosaur there and it just being like normal. Yeah. And I, I'm sure I've mentioned this many times, but I really want that uh, 
Uh, John Sayles' script to come to life here in the third Jurassic World. So at the beginning of that, there's like a, a, a kid's baseball game. And out of nowhere, a bunch of like pteranodons or something start attacking the, the field. And I think that could be really interesting because that's something that for sure could happen. That was literally the last thing they teased um, in yeah. the credit sequence there with the pteranodons in Las Vegas. So maybe they moved on to Enid, Oklahoma or something and started attacking, um, you know, a, a little t-ball game or something like that and picked up a few of the parents or somebody who's out there watching the game with their dog or something like horrible stuff it would be pretty brutal um but that could be intense i wanted i want a situation where you're not using the characters you know sort of like fallen kingdom did and oh actually a lot of the movies um all of them. <laughs> yeah pretty much all of them well jurassic park 3 um you know you actually come to know those characters a little bit um eric uh, the other one's a skeleton at that point, but um, yeah, uh, the Jurassic World just nothing really happens there. You just you just know the Indominus uh, a little bit farther on, so it would be nice again to have you know a continuation of not knowing anything about these characters, who they are, and then just forgetting about them. Just you know, just moving on to another portion of the story. Um, you know, just maybe showcasing different Dino attacks around the yeah. country or the world or something like that. I think that could be really interesting, um, just showcasing all these different events. You know, they just transition from news story to news story. Um, could be interesting. I think that's exactly where they're going to go. I think it's going to be – I hate to say that little montage at the end of Fallen Kingdom because I don't know if I loved that little montage, but it will probably touch on something like that. Like it might have that like the baseball game, for example, and then it will kind of just glaze over different events like that. It will probably will – start in some way of just people existing with dinosaurs somehow like the flintstones it'll be like that like people just like using them for whatever they do and with work or yeah who knows it'll be something um flintstoney i think well yeah that'll be interesting if they do something along those lines to, to have a multiple attacks i think maybe just one might be the best route because if you're doing multiple it'll seem like all of a sudden the dinosaurs are attacking humans like i don't know right. where all these sets of attacks are happening um, I don't think that's necessarily the way you want to go, but um, you have no, one attack, and then you say time, like after time that, has, time has passed. So if they were going to attack everyone, why would they attack everyone like right whenever we're watching? No, yeah, that seems weird. Happened. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe they'll say something like, "This is the fifth attack in yeah. a series of three years, or something like that." You know, so. That's and I what don't I would know how like. I feel about that because the, my problem with missing three years in between each movie is we miss a lot of stuff and stuff that people might want to see. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, you're definitely going to miss out on a lot of the stuff, and I think I think you just can't go three years without having dinosaurs captured or dead or whatever. Right. Like. Right. And I for sure don't want them to just be like, oh yeah, somebody killed the T Rex. Oh what? No, I know. Like, you can't do that. You could you could say somebody captured it, and now they own it in their zoo, you know, or something along those lines. I guess. Um, I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I'm I'm the only thing I'm assuming is it's going to be worldwide dinosaurs at some point, whether they're mm -hmm. killed off eventually or not. I don't know. But uh, what do you think about like the inclusion of a legacy character? I know you kind of touched on it, but. Um, you think that's a good idea to continue opening up the past and, and uh, relying on characters of the past? I do. And I don't think it's relying on. I think it's just embracing the story. And it's all these people are living in the same scenario and same world and situation. And they all have ties to people who lived in these situations even more so. So it, it's doesn't it's not a big stretch to have their family heavily affected by the events that's happened in their time. So it's not weird for me to think it's not like fan service to put somebody's son or daughter or relation or whatever in because it makes sense because they're already part of the story anyway because of their parents. So I like that. It, it's more realistic to me. I don't I don't think it's stretching at all. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily mind it, if, especially if it was just like a one off. Um, he mentioned there uh, like Muldoon's kid getting killed. Like I'm like, oh, man, like father, <laughs> like son. Huh. They just can't. Catch a break, those two. Um, I don't know if I would like to say that, but um, 
I think like a little nod to continuing the family legacy and stuff like that and and being upset about the you know the past and what happened. Yeah. I think that's pretty interesting. And I know I mean, like like you were mentioning about uh, the the joking fan community aspects. I mean, Josh Gad has said like multiple times <sighs> that he resembles uh you know Dennis Nedry, so why not have him in there? But then also you have to look at um the the secret exhibit uh, the Lego shorts that popped up this past year last year um, mm. at the uh, did you see that Jen I think I did okay well if anybody didn't see it and doesn't want to hear what happens um, or what the reveal is at the end just tune out for oh, a I second did. I did um, but Dennis Nedry's nephew pops up at the end and he's like I'm going to avenge my yeah. uncle or whatever That's I think it's right. his uncle right like. So, I mean, who knows? I'm sure they were consulted, you know, uh, Colin and Frank Marshall and whoever were consulted on that story. Not to say that that story will become Jurassic World 3, but, you know, it's on somebody's mind out there. Maybe it could happen, at least a legacy character coming out of the woodwork somehow. I think that could be interesting and and it might happen. I honestly love mixing of timelines and these people existed Within, because that's why I really like the evolution of Claire because it took us to that time where she talked about how where she was during the San Diego incident and that whole thing. And it's really cool to see them all existing in the same world, knowing that they existed while this was happening. And now the old crew are existing in the same time when this is happening, and they all know of each other and the circumstance happening, and then this, the family members down the line. I mean, that's the whole thing is. I love that. I love that whole inclusion of the whole franchise and everyone intertwining. And I, I really hope, and I think it might happen, that this Jurassic 3 is kind of going to culminate that whole thing and really pull it together. So I'm all for that. Kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time that Universal has done, like, you know, their own Avengers team up, essentially. Like, right. they did it with Fast and Furious, and, and they combined multiple movies out of nowhere. Uh you know, you got uh, f- the first Fast and Furious with all those characters met up with character, uh, another character from the second Fast and Furious and also another character from the third Fast and Furious. So it was like this big combination. And then they, they met up all in, in, in movie five and, and, you know, future movies and stuff. So I could see them pulling a similar thing because those movies are making billions of dollars, too. So. It's a it's a working formula, and look, Avengers Endgame just made uh, one point two billion dollars on opening weekend. Uh, Jurassic will never touch that. That's not going to happen ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they did include, you know, legacy characters, that would certainly help the box office. And I think I think we should start to embrace the age of fan service. I know a lot of people have um, looked down upon fan service. Um, you know, thinking that there is a higher art form that can be achieved if you cover different stories that people aren't expecting. But I think when you do create a story that maybe people are expecting and pay off certain things, like, for instance, seeing the the trio of Grant, um, Malcolm and Ellie returning in some form, people would love that. And, and that would be oh. amazing. I don't know how it would work, it but would. it would be amazing fan service. Um, I mean... The and, Jeff and, Goldblum stuff was a total hit in yeah. Fallen Kingdom. Then everyone was sad that it, he wasn't in more, actually. Exactly. So. Embrace the fan service. I think that's what you really need to do. And stop saying it's bad for the, the movies and stuff like that. I think it'll be fine and people will love it. Um, yeah. And I think that's almost when Jurassic World is at its best is when they embrace those moments that you yeah. want to see. You know, like those things that yeah. you're looking forward to. That's when I think they're at their best. Um I mean, so, the yeah. stuff that most people, I think, were complained about with Jurassic World was they wanted to see more of the operating park. And that's exactly coming fan service from Jurassic Park because everyone always wanted to see the operating park. And now we have a park open and everyone's like, well, I wanted to see more attractions and more areas and stuff. And so that shows you right there that the, the want from Jurassic World was more of that kind of thing. And so it absolutely is a selling point. I don't see anything wrong with fan service. I mean, I'm a fan. Serve me. <laughs> yeah um so if they were to create like a full fan service jurassic world 3 i mean i, I don't know what, what what would we see we we would definitely receive uh would, see a see return fan. to the islands see me <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh 
<laughs> in the best way. Yeah. I mean, look, we would see, like I said, a return to the islands because everything tells us that they're already dead. But, hey, mm-hmm. um, you know, in Star Wars, Rey and Kylo Ren broke the lightsaber. That's returning. And and all this, other, the Emperor might be returning here and all this other stuff. So, hey, fan service is still alive in that aspect. So bring back things that people are looking forward to, like explain why there are different raptors um, in film canon, not just elsewhere. Um and yes, let's let's see the original Raptors again. Like not maybe not those ones, obviously, because they're dead. But that style, maybe we'll see the the wild Raptors from uh, the Lost World, the Tiger Stripes. Let's see all these things that people want to see. I, I, I'm open for it. And what about Sorna? That's still something out there that no one touches. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like the number one fan service thing right now, right? We want to see Sorna. I, I don't know why. Like, why do we need to see this island again? We just we just want to see, like, dinosaurs amongst the redwoods. And we could get that <laughs> in this movie just by being in California. Like, so yeah. it could work out just exactly the same. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, I think, like, people really love the fan service moments so far. Like, um, you know, the moment, the very quick moment inside the visitor center Mm -hmm. Um, the moment where you see the overturned explorer at the bottom of the T-Rex ravine, um, John Hammond statue, which would have been cooler if you would have saw the ravine. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You got to actually do it right as well. You know, cause we, I mean, while we like these things that we're critical of them. Like the the goosebumps and chills if he would have walked up and then looked up and saw the cliff like thing. Oh my goodness. That would yeah. have been so awesome. It would have been really amazing. And there's no reason why they couldn't just do a nice little pan up. Owen, you know, is mm. down there looking for blue. He pans, looks around, and he sees the giant cliff. He sees oh, my the, gosh. the cables are still hanging down. You I know, would the have cables cried. are still there. If the car is still there, the cables are still hanging there. And then, you know, you look over to the other side and you see that there's a nice sloping incline so that the T-Rex can get up there. <laughs> like, that show these things. Every- Thing. <laughs> seriously show these things to give us oh, that fan God. service that we want i know it's probably too late on all these things but um i think that's what this last movie needs to to make a lot of money um that would be cool make it three hours long like go yes for it. please <laughs> look nobody's having an issue st- sitting through endgame we can all do it we're all uh well i guess most most of us watching these movies may be adults here so <laughs> we can do it <laughs> <laughs> exactly um so let's see what else do we have here thanks donnie um this next one is an email here from jenny and uh jenny says hi or should i say happy new year well jenny um <laughs> here's the thing <laughs> um she says uh, it's jenny from sweden again and i just want to th- say thank you for so much oh man here we go Thank you so much for having my little fanfic on your podcast. You could not see me, but I had a big smile on my face the whole time and was laughing a lot at Upright Arlo. Hey, that was one of my favorite things. Um, I listened to Jennifer's episode about Claire again and realized how Claire in some ways resembles Hammond. And yes, I know I'm probably late to realize that. Uh, But here is my question for the episode. And sorry again if you've already answered this question. Do you think Claire should have her own flea circus moment or do you (gasps) think she already had that moment in one of the movies or the book? Keep up the great work. Uh, Again, and again, love to all the people in the community. Oh my goodness. I love this person. Their name is Jenny. They're just, they're, they're my friend now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh my goodness. Okay. For the fact that they listened to the Claire one again, that's amazing. And, um, flea circus and i love the flea circus like this is everything this, this is your is question here this is like really is. yeah it's pegged straight um, okay. at you okay so i want to say well I, you know what the, the apatosaurus is probably a flea circus moment because it's one of those reflective deep thinking like just letting go of everything and then like reevaluating your life and just kind of thinking about everything that happened where you've been who you are now what's going to change it's the same thing. Like when they were eating the ice cream and then Alan and the kids were out there, all this bad stuff was happening. Well, now she's here with the Apatosaurus. Her nephews are out there. All this bad stuff is happening. So I think that's a, a perfect pairing of flea circus moments. Like what? 
Hammond's Flea Circus was like his dream and all of that. And I guess Claire's Flea Circus is her empire, like her her park that was her responsibility and her job. And now it's completely she sees the real animal and then Hammond sees the real like dangerous situation. However, Hammond is still um wanting control of it. And yep. Claire, I think, gives up control there. So that's a little different. Yeah, so I uh, I don't necessarily think it would be about like gaining any kind of uh, realization or anything like that. But um, I I don't know uh, the the flea circus scene is so impactful. It's really hard yeah. for any scene in any of these movies to really match that because that is for sure one of the top three moments at, at the at the best. There, um, I think it's it's improbable that that will ever be beaten, um, but. Claire, um, you know, like you said, the Apatosaurus scene, I don't necessarily think that that's like on the same level, but I, I get like it's kind of this realization for Claire. Um, I think that's as close as you're going to get. Well, I would say maybe the um, uh, do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur moment? Mm, that's that's mm. kind of, I think, in the vein of the flea circus moment, at least because they're having this conversation and like realizing like what went wrong and what happened and whose fault is what. Um, so it's kind of similar in that mm. sense. I don't know. I, don't, I see where you're going. And it did play the same music with the piano in the background. So you got that. But um, no, I don't see it. I didn't get that impact on the, do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur? Like I didn't get it. I didn't feel that same deep feeling that I did with the apatosaurus. And I feel like if you're talking about a flea circus scene, you really need something that pulls hmm. at you and you, I, you feel the weight on both ends and you, you emphasize with one side and then you, your logic tells you the other side. And I, I felt that in the apatosaurus. Like I felt the shift when I was yeah. watching that. And I felt the shift in the um, flea circus, but I did not feel a shift in the, do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur? I just, I just think, oh, well, that's a nice line and like a nice moment. And then with the triceratops, which is what was in the book, and that was her first dinosaur. And like, that was nice, but I didn't feel like, a mom- momentous shift like I did with the Apatosaurus compared to the Flea Circus as well. I don't know if I would even say that there was a shift in the Flea Circus. You really think that there was? Mm, I think like Hammond is still delusional. Like he still is like, Let's see. I don't know. He's just like, I mean, not, not the same shift, but the yeah. same um, deep, impactful meaning, maybe not really okay. shift because yeah, he's like I said, the difference would be, he still thinks it could happen and he, he's still up there, but, um, and she, is obviously lost everything there and lost all the control there. So there, that's a little difference, but it just seems like they're both pivotal points. They both are trying to do the same thing. I feel like, but uh, for different yeah, story. Plots, sure. But I think, I think the, um, the, the first time you saw a dinosaur moment is, is impactful for me at least because it, it's kind of, it's not just speaking to Owen in that moment and, and her rethinking about the first time that she saw a dinosaur, which does come out in the, in the novel. Um, it's impactful for me because like it's talking to me as well to the viewer to say, do you guys yeah. remember the first time you saw a dinosaur? And, and you think back and you're like, yeah, it was, well, you know, I mean, it was in a book or, or something like that probably, but the first time you really saw one was in Jurassic park, you know, they were really alive. Um, so that's pretty impactful, I think for me, but I think there could be even a, like a more impactful moment, like a, a flea circus deal. But I, like I said, it's, I think it's going to be hard to match um, yeah. overall. Yeah, I don't think it's happened yet to that degree. No. I mean, I, I definitely see your point, though, in that one. I'd be interested in listeners, if they're still listening at this point, of what they yeah, would yeah. say. What, if they think it's it's the Apatosaurus or um, the, do, you, was the, do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur or something else or neither, if they're still thinking it hasn't happened yet to that degree. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. So I know a, a few months or however long ago it was um, when we were debating about like the power uh, that was yes. that was in that scene. This could be that that new debate here. So let's let's get some answers here. That'd be awesome. I'd like to actually hear what people think about that. Yeah, I'm curious too. So I'm sure they have like a gut reaction and a gut thought to that question. So I'm curious to know what that would be. Yeah. So um, thanks, Jenny. That was that was awesome. And I think it'll be interesting to see what people uh, say moving forward. Um, we're, now we're not done with Sweden. Uh, let's let's hear what Nemo has to say. Uh, I forgot to say something. Uh, you know, in the last mailbag, there was a girl that said she was from Sweden. Her name was Jenny. And 
just wanted to say, I don't know if I've already said this, but I just want to say that I'm also from Sweden. <laughs> and I'm glad to hear that more Jurassic fans are from Sweden. So, yeah, just want to say that. Bye. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, so I, I had uh, that lying in our mailbox still. So I figured, hey, Jenny's back again. So let's play it again. So there you go, Jenny. That was a little Aww. message from Nemo. So I love that. Yeah. Uh, next one here is uh, a voicemail from Ender. Let's take a listen. Hey, Brad and Jen. It's Ender again. Thanks hey. so much for the great birthday present of having your guys' podcast come back on the week of my birthday. <laughs> awesome. Aww. Really helped at work. Happy birthday. Anyway, so you mentioned in your new episode that you're not too happy with the idea of the roller coaster in the new Jurassic Park area. Oh, here we go. Orlando. Mm. But you've also said before that you don't love the Jurassic Park ride that we already had. <laughs> so my question for both of you is design your perfect Jurassic Park theme park ride. <laughs> oh, it can be Jurassic Park, the Lost <laughs> World, JP3, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, anything within the series. So just within the limitations of what, you know, could actually be made, or if you want to go outside of what could actually be made, what Jurassic Park ride would you design? Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this one off. Um, I think I'm going to model a, a, a different thing that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, I would love, like, a ride that replicates the um, journey to the island from, like, uh, the Lost World. So you're in the, a camper or an RV of some sorts with multiple seats, um, and you're just traversing uh, Sorna, and then you you have that full like knock over the cliff moment. Now you might be listening and saying, "Well, wasn't that just Kong next door?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, that kind of is. It mm-hmm. really is." So when I was on Kong, I was literally just saying, "This is the best Jurassic Park ride I've ever been on." Yes, I say that all the time. It really is. Like it yes. that ride. It nails everything that you would want out of a Jurassic ride. Now, yes, there's other aspects. There's like the flying creatures, the the giant slug thingies, and and uh, of course Kong. Um, but like the whole moment with the the uh, two V Rexes next to you, and and like fighting back and forth on either side. That like moment when I was on that ride, I was like, oh my god, this is the Lost World. Like this is what I want out of a Jurassic ride. I want to be in the RV as they're attacking us, you know, like that moment in the movie. And then those your tram car kind of goes over the cliff and then you get caught by some vines and and by Kong and all this stuff. So like that's pretty much that that already exists, I guess, but like if I was to design it if it was in a maybe a separate park or that Kong didn't exist, I think that would be a really fun uh, in canon, like you know, version of of a Jurassic ride would be in those RVs, going over the cliff, um, being saved somehow. Maybe instead of falling over, Eddie actually saves you. It's a it's a completely different story. You get saved somehow and get pulled back up, and then you have to get off the island somehow. I think that would be a lot of fun. I mean, and the ride vehicles are look honestly look exactly the same as the Gallimimus ride in yeah, Jurassic they do. World. I, yeah. it, doesn't even make sense why that's not a Jurassic ride. <laughs> but um, what forever I guess, stuck I, what on I, it. I know what I what I talked about before was the Mosasaurus restaurant and the Mr. DNA Dark ride. I know I'm mixing franchises, but he said we can do anything we want. So the Mr. DNA Dark ride in the Discovery Center, um, a Gyrosphere ride just because it's cool, and the Jeep ride like um, some similar to what you said that would be fine with me. Just like an RV Jeep, something like that just like the kong ride like that immersive and inside outside and just like that the kong ride but jurassic theme all right so we're both obviously skipping over jurassic park three um oh yeah what would uh, what would that be Toronodon. it's something with well you have the Toronodon flyers so yeah i mean that's essentially like you know you've got your bird cage thing yeah i would want like a bird cage thing now would that be like a a raft ride um Mm. like like in the movie you have the um, I mean, that would be pretty awesome if, if it was a raft ride, but it would like follow the kind of like the path of the movie in a way like you're getting attacked by pteranodons. You're in a very smoky cage. That's like very atmospheric. You got tall cliffs and these pteranodons attacking. I don't know how you would make that work. It just seems very improbable. But um, and then at the end, it's like the Spinosaurus attack in the little lagoon there with the flames and the fire. That would be amazing. I would say yes to all of that, except not a boat ride. Do it um, 
like a mix with what they're doing with Harry Potter, like with Gringotts, with how that roller coaster like goes and it slows down and turns, but not with that kind of roller coaster, like the um that Tronodon ride in Japan or whatever, where you're like in on the in the bird, like it's okay. carrying you or something like that, but not a full on crazy big roller coaster, but that type of coaster and that type of harness system where where your feet hang down like that kind, but slower like more like green gots that kind of thing so it's immersive but you're still like being carried by it on and on and then you're going through all that stuff like you said maybe you go outside maybe it speeds up slows down just a, a fully indoor outdoor immersive fast slow Toronto and on type ride roller coaster thing yeah it's so interesting because like how would that even work like i could imagine like a story where Hey, this pteranodon just grabbed your shoulders and now you're flying all over the place yeah. and it's just taking you on a nice scenic tour. Um, and it could be like a similar uh, ride vehicle, I guess, as uh, the Forbidden Journey. You know how it's like that bench? Yeah. Could be like that. Like that. Um, and that's very bouncy, so it could feel like you're flying along. I mean, that's supposed to be flying as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but then what was that? What else was I going to say? Um but see, they need to build the birdcage, though. Like, that's how yeah. you have to go into the ride. Like, they have to have that giant structure. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would be hard to sell, I think. That would be awesome, though. I would love that. That would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Jurassic Park 3 is kind of hard, though. <laughs> like, that's the biggest one. I mean, I guess the raft ride, because there is a lot of rafting in it, but I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's mostly just, hey, we, we're going to have to bulldoze this entire... Uh, thing that we have here and just make a new raft ride. <laughs> um, but thanks, dude. Uh, let's move on to another one here. This one comes from Nathan. It's actually another email. Uh, the subject is Jurassic World 3. Uh, it says, Dear Brad, I am writing for the very first time and I have some questions for you. This is about the future film and I had some speculations that I think would be really cool for the final film. I would like to, to get your thoughts and opinions first for one scenario for the film. I would think it'd be cool for the genetics company, Biosyn, to make a return to the franchise. What do you think about that idea? Second, do you have any opinion on how Blue the Raptor can make a return for the final film? Lastly, do you think that the final film uh, will have one group or organization with their own dinosaurs seeking out to rule the world? That's all I have. Hopefully you'll read this. I know how busy you are, and all I want to say is thanks for all things Jurassic. Uh, so thanks, Nathan. Uh, Nathan, I, I, his name, he wrote Nathan. No, I did it again. <laughs> he wrote Nathan E. So I'm adding an E into uh, ne- Nathan. Nathan. So yeah, Nathan, thank you. <laughs> it's that point. It the is. Podcast. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, uh, do you think it would be cool for Biosyn to make a return? Do you think it would be cool? What is Biosyn? I don't even know. <laughs> so in the book, Biosyn is the company that uh, Lewis Dodgson is, you know, you know, he's trying to get uh... the dino DNA. Um, so would um, now they didn't make any real appearance in the, the movies. You don't ever see Biosyn or anything like that. You just assume that they're around lurking in the shadows. Um, would you like to see Biosyn come to life here in the, sure. the final? I mean, you want to fan service it. The people love that. Yes. I know I have seen there that you go. around, actually. So, yes. Yeah, perfect. Yes, I do want it. That would be the perfect fan service right there. Mm-hmm. Everybody is dying to see Biosyn and maybe even a recasting of Dodgson come back. Uh, that would be fantastic. I would 100% be on board. Um, secondly, do you have any opinions on how Blue will make a return? Um. What will be Blue's first reveal, first scene, or when in the film? Do you thought, geez, I don't know. We got to, we don't know anything about that. I don't even know how to predict something like that. Oh, that I know that's like, very, very hard. Will um, she be captured already, or will she be living around, or will she, will Owen have something to do with it? Will he be housing her? Like, will they be having the slumber parties? I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, we didn't really mention this earlier about the the start of the movie. Somebody else asked it, I believe, too. Um, I, I would love to see, like, the start of the movie just be very, very much like a nature documentary. So you see Blue and I don't know how, but maybe some other raptor family or, or, or maybe even just Blue on her own. But I want to see Blue just doing natural things, just wandering around, you know, making a nest, just chilling, you know, just hanging out. Um, 
I would love to see that and maybe some other dinosaurs as well. So maybe that's how I would like to see Blue reintroduced is just doing dinosaur things, just being an animal. I think I think they're going to do some that makes sense, but I think they're going to do something grander. But Probably. I don't I don't know what. Like I don't even have a clue. I don't know if they're still off on their own. But I don't know. I mean, they might do that with other dinosaurs, but Blue I think will have something special. But man, I don't know what. I'm I don't stumped. Know. Uh lastly, do you think the final film will have one group or organization seeking to rule the world? Isn't that always happening in every movie and every franchise forever? Someone wants to rule the world with Somebody stuff. always does, yeah. I mean, you know, n- not, never to that grand nature, I guess, in these franchises uh, or this franchise. You know, people want to make money. That's about it, it seems like. Um, never, like, with the intent to take down the full universe, like, you know, Thanos or somebody like that from, from Marvel. Um I don't know. I don't think we're going to see that. I think we'll just see somebody just trying to utilize these things for bad intentions. Um, Just, again, trying to make money because that's always what it's about. Um, But, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be like, I want to make dinosaurs to kill off the human population uh, so I can be the king of the world. You know, I don't don't think anything like that will happen. Oh, not like that, no. I mean, that's something that's so great about the Jurassic franchise and that Colin and folk are trying to pull away from me, but I'm still grasping onto that it is about the people and it's about human error and human nature and, and human greed. And it's all about like the worst things in a person. And then you have the best things in a person. And I always see Jurassic as that way, like how people would react and, and interact with research like that. And, and like some people want to make a weapons, like, and so forth. So you see the best and the worst in people. And I always say Jurassic is a, is a people study and yeah. you see that um aspect all around so in my mind um i i like that kind of thing so what was the question i was going somewhere <laughs> do you would think that they you would see them like trying to rule the world oh, oh, oh. with yeah, their dinosaurs you. no i don't think it would go that far because but i do think at what you were saying about the greed and the money and it, it will go like up to there because that's all that's that's realistic i think it's a it's a realistic thing and they try to play on like realistic flaws and, and I think that's as far as it will go and it probably will go into that like you'll have people fighting for money fighting for technology the power over the technology but not like destroying the world like not I want to rule the world with that like no we're not gonna have that. yeah yeah I think uh I think that's the way it's gonna go so thank you Nathan <laughs> for <laughs> for sending in that uh email Nathan um let's move on here to the next voicemail um I don't know who it's from but uh let's Check it out. Hi. Hi. Hey. I love you. <laughs> Guess what I found out about this duck? Guess what I found? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Stop. Okay. There's a lot of laughing. Hi, I'm looking for the oh. stray rack. So I'm, I think it's good. Oh, I, I think it's really cool. Ooh. And I... Just wondering why you don't like the Pierceralophus, but I liked it. I might get the Triceratops too, and uh, there's also Concavenator. I might get it. Goodbye. Uh, oh, see ya. Well, oh, wait, that was not. Thing. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Still there. Um, um, uh, I also collect a lot of Jurassic World toys right now. Uh, I've actually got, I actually own a Albertosaurus, a, 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 a Albertosaurus too, and I think it's really cool. And oh yeah. That pterosaur, that flying dinosaur that you couldn't name uh, in one of your videos from uh, January 9th. It, it's called Ramphorhynchus, by the way. Sorry. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's some shade right there. I'm um, sorry about the laugh. It's just my sister. She's annoying. <laughs> don't, for, don't worry about it. I'm not annoying. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, sorry about that. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see ya. That's a thing. <laughs> oh, bye. See you. Um, all right. So we're talking about toys here. Um, so the the Parasaurolophus, um, I actually did a, a review, a video review on that one, but I uh, haven't posted it yet. But um, I just, I think it could be painted a little bit better. Um, it's not really my favorite paint job. I don't mind the sculpt all that much and the positioning. I don't think that's all that bad. 
Um, don't love the feet on the thing, but it's a paint job for me. I don't really like it. It's a little too yellow. Um, have you seen that one, Jen? Um, I think I've seen it. I saw it on shelves, but I don't have it. Yeah, you're not much of a collector, right, when it comes to the toys? No, not a huge one. I mean, I bought a couple things, but I don't, I don't, I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. The Triceratops is okay for me, the newer green one. Um, the Albertosaurus is pretty awesome. I know this, uh, this person said they had that one as well, so that one's cool. Um, and the Ramphorhynchus, hey, I know, I couldn't say it, you know? When you show up, when you show up to a store, you get the camera running, and then you look at this thing, and it says Ramphorinkus, and it's it's spelled way harder looking than it sounds. Um, I'm just like that one. I don't know how to say that. So I hey, look, I'm no dino expert. Um, I like all the ones in the movies, and have no clue how to pronounce half of them. Um, so yeah, I did figure it out eventually. I did get around to it, but. Um, Thanks. You you got you got me there. I, I definitely didn't know back on <laughs> you had the date and everything. I think you said January 9th. <laughs> so yeah, thanks there. Um I know. Um I'm professional. But thanks for calling in. You and your your sisters, they sound cool. They're laughing at us in the back. So, I know I can't pronounce anything. Ne- <laughs> Were you Nathan? Was this Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> just prove their point. <laughs> um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, all right, so we have two voicemails here. I think they're somewhat quick from Sam. Uh, let's take a listen. Hey, JP Podcast Crew, it's me, Sam again. Hey, Sam. And my question for you is: What do you think about the idea of of uh, famous cryptids actually being creations of the of Ingen and Mesrani that? That escape containment and are are roaming the wilds, huh. such as Nessie, Mokili Membe, and Chupacabra, which could actually be uh, one of their earliest hybrids for Dominus Rex. Oh, okay, I think that's it. Um, oh, interesting. That's cool. I I I don't know. What do you think? I think that's really cool idea but i don't know how i feel about it but it's really cool um so like you're saying that those like urban legend things that we have are actually mutated hybrid things that were once created by ingen and mizrani is that what he was saying yeah basically oh that's pretty awesome like like you were saying i like the idea i i like the idea of these like weird creatures out there that um you know have been just like thrown away and maybe they survived somehow and they're out lurking around but i don't necessarily buy the full concept just because a lot of these stories have been around for Mm -hmm. you know forever really they're just passed along these you know tales of you know the uh chupacabra or nessie stuff like that's Mm -hmm. been around for a long time these stories so i don't necessarily think if if new uh engine was around you know just like in the 80s, uh, it would fully work out that way. But, you know, introducing some new things could be cool. I mean, I'm all about linking the franchise into World World because I, I always yeah. say I like how it matches with time. And it's always been a thing like that could it be happening, like that could have happened. Jurassic World could have happened over there in Costa Rica or whatever because we're all the way over here anyway. So, like, that could have happened and Jurassic Park could have happened. And all of that is so real that it seems like it could have happened in, in this universe and and to link it further with those kinds of things i mean that that is cool but like you said yeah the timing is off but that's why i i this is going off on a weird tangent but that's why i always like um we always talk about like the ice age uh creatures them making them as well into a park and bringing them in with dinosaurs and that's kind of the same thing of linking our real life situations further into that universe and i'm all about that i'm all about linking that but and yeah unfortunately the nessie stuff goes back so far it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. i think it's it's rooted in like a great idea so that, that would be interesting to see them like you know play around with that somehow um yeah. let's see the next one here also from sam hey brad uh hey. i just wanted to ask if, if you and the JP podcast crew have heard about the new sh- show coming to Netflix, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. If so, do you think it'll be animated or live action? All right. 
Have you uh, heard of this rumored uh, uh, Netflix show? I've heard that there is a rumored Netflix show. That's it. That's it. I don't know anything <laughs> else. I've heard that there is one. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, something popped up recently. Like, you may also like Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous or something along those lines um, on Netflix. And, you know, it got a lot of people you know, thinking about what is this thing? What, it, why is there something like this in Netflix's database? Why, why do we not know anything else about it? Um, so I'm certainly interested to see what it is. I, I would assume, um, that it, it would be animated. That's, that's what I'm I, thinking. I'm guessing animated as well. Now, do you think it's going to be, have characters that we know, or it's just completely new cast, like shifting your focus someplace else? Oh, well, I would really hope it has new characters, to be honest. I think the constant rotation of, you know, in the the main films, uh, you know, we're talking about the, the rides and stuff now. You're talking about the Lego games and, and shows. It's all revolving around Claire and Owen. Um, I would love to see a new set of characters if that was the case. You know, if, if this is Camp Cretaceous. This sounds a little less adventurous to me, a, l- a little less... Um, threatening, right? Doesn't it have like a, a very, like more fun tone to it? Yeah, I mean, you think of the like the Camp Jurassic, I guess, at the park. So that's kind of like the kids area. So yeah. it is like more like a Dora the Explorer kind of feel, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking. I, I feel like it will be more kid friendly and centered around stuff like that. So it could be interesting to introduce like some sort of, you know. Uh, employee another employee for Jurassic World that uh you know maybe runs a kids section or something like that in the park um and they visit the uh petting zoo and different stuff like that I don't know I have no idea what you know you know things uh, little hijinks people could get into but it could be interesting it could be fun or, and I think it would I mean, be animated Camp Cretaceous maybe it is like a camp like a boy scout camp or a girl scout camp or something where they actually do go camping at somewhere like the park or or like go on a, a thing i don't i don't really know where i'm going so i don't camp but i'm guessing <laughs> it's something something in that feel of it like that adventure like it's not an adventure is a sense that dinosaurs are going to eat people in this probably not i would say um but more so just like the adventure idea and the kids like being like a group of kids having their own adventure and maybe like an adult here or there but mostly yeah. just being them so I can definitely see them trying to aim at very young kids. Um, yeah. right, right now, you know, me and my family, uh, we're, we're always watching, you know, Netflix and different stuff with, with my kid Lincoln. And he is he is constantly asking to watch this show called Super Monsters. So he'll just sit on the couch and be like, monsters, monsters, monsters. And we have to turn on Netflix and turn on Super Monsters. And it's basically the story of like uh, these monsters so you see the typical like the dracula the wolfman the uh frankenstein all those things but they're the kid versions so their parents are like the full monsters oh, that's and then awesome. the, yeah and then the kids are the kid versions that are trying to learn their powers so they're going to so a school cute. yeah it's a very cute show i think it's it's fun and and there's only like two seasons or something so it's like we're constantly seeing the same episodes <laughs> over and over but i could see something like that like like you said it's a kids camp mm-hmm. and it's yeah. a story for kids so maybe maybe it's the same kids over a summer or maybe it's different rotating kids every episode um and it's not about being threatening or anything like that but they get into little situations that maybe could be scary at times or you know little adventures in the park but um i could see that for sure being something that we see yeah i think that i think we're dead on with that yeah all right so uh let's move on here uh That was from Sam. So, yeah, that was those two great questions there, Sam. So uh, this one, this next one here is from Andrew and it says favorite film location message. Hey, Brad, I've been a longtime listener of the show and I tend to listen to it at work because I am a custodian and work the night. uh, Here we go. And the work nights (laughs) can be long. 
as this episode is. Um, my question is, what is your favorite location out of the five films? For me, it's the InGen Worker Village. When I first saw The Lost World as a kid, that location always stood out to me. Something about the ominous score when the group first enters, uh, combined with the sounds of the wind or the raptors or moving metal doors and the fog, made it so spooky. Evidently, the only constructed four buildings out of what was originally planned for the facility. Regardless, it still looks amazing on screen. Thank you for all you do, and I look forward to future episodes. Sincerely, Andrew. Um, that's Ooh. I think that's a that's the perfect location right there. Um, let me think about it for a minute. But yeah, that worker village is definitely I think a top notch location out of this this whole franchise because because of those spooky vibes. The second they walk in there, you know, you have those dinosaur bones as they're walking up. And then you have like the the creepy abandoned elements, which if Jurassic World didn't necessarily do it fully right, the Lost World did. Like they really captured that abandoned look and the vibe and the spooky atmosphere and everything. It's it's phenomenal, that worker village. That is such a good question that I actually never thought about before. Favorite location. Now I'm trying to think, because I know – we always say the aviary is one of our favorite visual things, but that's, that's kind of all CG. So it's not really a, a lo- actual physical location. Or are we talking about ambulance? Because still the aviary is pretty cool because it's foggy and they're on that bridge and that's so cool too. But um, I'm trying to really go through like Main Street was neat, like broken yeah. Main Street and Fallen Kingdom. That was neat. But like, oh my goodness. That yeah, where would you want to spend one. some time? Like, I guess like maybe that's what how, how we should look at it. Like, what what place would you like to go to the most and just hang out? Um, oh man, I mean, where like, would I like to go? Honestly, like the Lockwood Estate. You know, looking at the museum aspects of that yeah. would be really cool. Like just hanging out in there, looking at all the dioramas uh, that are set up there. All the fossil uh, stuff would be awesome to see. Um, I think personally, like the visitor center. I mean, just wandering around that would be really impressive. Uh, impressive? What? Impressive. <laughs> yeah. Impressive. I was going to say that too, but I'm, I'm going to say the visitor center. But I want to. I'm trying to think of something like just really cool and unique. Um, this is probably going to sound weird. Um, but honestly, the the T Rex log, like I want to go in. Well, that'd be the, awesome. The, the T-Rex log and um, not even like during the day where there's all those people, like just at night when the T-Rex is just kind of probably moseying, I don't know if he's nocturnal or whatever, but just moseying along in his containment and just kind of hanging out in the log and just watching <laughs> through the window. Like that's like kind of where I would want to go. I don't yeah. know when you were saying like location, I'm trying to think of something cool and epic, but someplace I would really just want to hang out would be the T-Rex log. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's a cool one. I would love to do what like the the crew did, the um, gatherers in the Lost World. They basically were up on that ridge overlooking the entire like uh, stampede hunting grounds area. Like that would be really cool just to kind of see dinosaurs in their natural habitat. Um, but I, I'm going to go with that worker village. I think that was like such a cool atmosphere, the set that they built, um, just how, how it really sold that story. And made you question things a lot. Like you're just wondering about like this whole, you know, facility, what was there, what what happened here. I think that's really cool. Man, I wish I can remember that. I wish I could remember the Lost. This is Lost World, right? I don't it remember. is, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wish I could remember that. I vaguely so, do. There's that amazing like mural of Jurassic Park um, <laughs> on the wall. Remember. It's um, Nick Van Owen goes to like use the radios and, and try to contact uh, like the boats or the helicopters or something. Um, and like the Raptors start attacking and that's where the gymnastics happen mm, in that, yes. uh, that okay. building. So that, that area is just really cool and just fascinating to think like how it all just went South, you know, this, this well, didn't enclosure. They have a similar just... thing in Jurassic three when they yes. went in the old lab or something. That was not, that was neat. Yeah, I think any kind of abandoned lab like looks fantastic, and I'll say Jurassic Park three and dress uh, and and the Lost World did it better than the visitor center in Jurassic World. You know, I like that at that moment, but it's so short, um, yeah, and just not fully encapsulating like everything there. Um, I mean, that I think those honestly, two movies did it better. 
Fallen Kingdom should have, that should have been when they went into the lab, the control room, all those old, instead of the bunker, they should have been in the control room. Like, they should have went through all those old areas of Jurassic World, and then even touched on maybe old areas of Jurassic Park before they blew up the island. That's a tangent. But, um, yep, let's get that fan service. <laughs> that might have been one of our favorite locations, even, yeah. who knows, but... Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. I got. I don't know. I, I like if, if you ask me where do I want to hang out. I like the T Rex log. I want to hang out there at night, like just hearing like the the bugs or locusts or whatever, and just having the T Rex just kind of wander around past the window. Like, yeah, and hang out there. This is a cool one. I might like expand this into maybe like a bigger episode at some point and take some listener submissions and stuff like that. It could be cool to see what people think. It's a good question. Something I've never really thought about. Yeah. Let's move on here to um, a voicemail from Philip. It's coming somewhere. Uh, hey, Brad. Hey. Uh, it's uh, Philip uh, or <clears throat> on, on Twitter. Uh, it's, <clears throat> so it's been a while since I called Lucky You. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just uh, wanted to call and ask you a question. Uh, love love what you're doing with the podcast, especially all the all the extra help you're getting from people in the community. I think it's great, really, I really agree. great for the community. You're you're awesome. You guys are doing Aww. great. Keep it up. Uh, and uh, my question was like, do you think at the end of uh, the next Jurassic World? Because I I've stated before that I really just want it to end after this <laughs> one. You can do prequels mm. and spinoffs, just no more sequels. Uh, do you want like every every cloned animal, well, you know, they're not really the same, so they're not really cloned, but do you want every one of them to die so there'll be no more left? Because I really like that. I really like, like, a really emotional scene. I think I heard somebody online say where where just the last dinosaur dies. Maybe it's blue. Maybe she just slowly dies or something, or just somebody shoots it. Like, I'd really like that. Just just want your thoughts on that. Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, see you guys. Have a good day. Well, thanks, Philip. You hmm. really making me sad. Thanks, I know. <laughs> wow. Why you got to do that to me right now? It's late, that's and place. I'm sad about this now. And now oh, I got to think about this and have dreams about me, this. Took me to a place. Yeah. Um. I I don't know. I mean, no matter what happens at the end of this movie, I feel like there has to be an outcome. Like you have to either have all the dinosaurs or none of the dinosaurs or I, and I don't even know what that would solve to be honest, because at the end of the day, like Eli Mills said, you can't put it back in the box. Mm -hmm. So even if they do kill off all the dinosaurs, this technology still exists, right? Unless all of humanity is like, you know, gone, all the scientists have died off or something. I don't know, like some crazy scenario. Um, I don't see how killing off the dinosaurs would matter, really. You know, I feel like they would always find a way. Like, yeah. I literally just walked into it. Life finds a way. Um, I don't know. I think that would always happen. And But that, that would be really interesting and certainly very sad, um, you know, have Blue be the last dinosaur. That that could be interesting. We, we've talked about how this would end a couple times, and I believe our scenarios were – people just ended up living with them like regular, but that's where three is starting at. So we can't end there. So that won't be a scenario. But the other one is treat this research like it's nuclear war research, as in it's just unsaid that whoever has this knowledge just is protective of it. And it, they just don't go wielding nuclear bombs everywhere. So they're not just going to start creating dinosaurs everywhere, like kind of keep it in that same power. Like I think we were talking about that. But in a sense of if it does end there, then I guess you could kill off all the remaining dinosaurs and kind of extinct them that way and then keep the research behind, like, the same folks that know about Area 51. Like, those kind of secrets. <laughs> like, keep it there yeah. with the nuclear secrets, the briefcase with the locks on it, and, like, the, the alien secrets. Like, keep it in there. Because right now, I mean we function fine with all those possible things existing. Um, so I think that the world would function fine with that research taken care of the same way that those things are yeah. and then just extinct the dinosaurs. So, yeah, I think that is the best way to look at it. And it, it really does, I think open up possibilities as far as like conversation and discussions concerned. Um, 
because yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't necessarily have to think about this stuff each and every day. I mean, of course it's always a worry, you know, uh, the threat of, you know, global catastrophe or something like that, but it, it seems to be under control and that could definitely happen here. And, you know, there's certainly, um, major threats if you ever, you know, took advantage of this when you're not supposed to and stuff like that. So I could see that that happening, but I don't know how much of this movie would be just like just court matters and, and, uh, conversations and stuff like that to fix the issues, but killing off the dinosaurs and then imposing these rules and like regulations would be fairly interesting and very sad that, you know, we would never ever see them ever again. Like it, that would be the end of the dinosaurs. And then it does leave it open in a way because then the technology, like someone has it just like it's there. It's not erased from memory or anything like it it does exist. So if they ever did want to pull it back out 20 years again from now or whatever, they can because it's not destroyed. Um, But it is controlled, which is so interesting because isn't that what Hammond like keeping control of it and Claire with keeping control of it. And then at the end here, if it is controlled in some kind of, whoever in the no folk i mean that is so interesting that is like where each film starts is a level of control and then losing control so i don't yeah. know uh, it, it's we i think we live in a world where like movies depend on mustache twirling villains you know so i i don't necessarily think that like people would abide by that in a movie world you know like uh, yeah. all these rules and regulations there's always going to be some rogue group that decides I will make these dinosaurs yet again, and I will try to take over the world. You know, like that one question said. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how how people would, you know, uh, uh, adhere to these rules and regulations. And look, the rules and regulations, if you pay attention to the DPG and Mizrani stuff, like it, it existed at, at one point in time. So, you know, we got to a point where we said, let's do it again. And now here we are again, and things are even more out of control than they were before. So, but now it's like know. actually civilians who didn't go to the park, like people who live just regular lives in the world, are affected. So that might be like a whole UN matter, and like the whole um, president of all the country matter, and like it's it's a bigger thing now because it's affecting people off of an island. So. I don't know. See, the thing is, though, if they do go that route, is that an interesting route for a movie? I don't know. That seems like the realistic route if something like that happened. But I don't know if a movie thinks it's interesting enough to go there. That's that's like where I'm struggling, because as I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But like, where where do you go with that? Like, you know, talking about all these rules and regulations, imposing them and all this good stuff. It could be fun. But like at the same time, I'm just like, I don't see where that really has any room in a in a Jurassic World 3. I almost think you have to kind of just forget about what we assume and what we where we think this movie is going to go and just go somewhere completely different. Um yeah, maybe, and like you said 3 years later skip over stuff. Yeah. I think you have to do something completely different but also at the same time I'm like introducing a brand new storyline doesn't necessarily bode well for the final you know, story in a, in a franchise. Yeah. They're going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. I don't know, but star Wars is kind of doing that in its own right as well. And they're in the final of a saga too. So who knows how either of these are going to go? I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is, this is going to be tough. I'm having such a hard time discussing what Jurassic world three will be with literally no details and just conjecture on what we see at the end of fallen kingdom which is not much. It doesn't really give us much as far as where the plot will go. So it's very hard to kind of project, I think. I mean, honestly, who expected a volcano in Fallen Kingdom? Like, who expected, who saw that coming from, like, left field? So uh, Yeah, I don't know. But they they made it happen, and somehow it'll happen again. Something, something big. It's got to be big. Yeah. It has to be. Um. But thanks, Philip. Uh, let's move over here to. Or I know we're we're going pretty long, of course, but that's the mailbag for you. <laughs> um, this one is an email from Arjun, our buddy Arjun. Uh, it says, while listening to the December mailbag, I thought of this point. 
I hope the promotion for the last part of Jurassic World, they learn from the Avengers 4 film. At this time, <laughs> we're six months away from the release of that movie. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and we don't even know the title. Oh, boy, Arjun. The world has changed. Um, <laughs> it says, for Fallen Kingdom, they really showed too much before the movie was released, so all great surprises were already spoiled through official channels. I really hope they don't do that again. For Jurassic World, they've earned it. I'd say keep uh, keep much more in the dark. People will go see it, even if they're angry for not seeing anything before. They'll forgive it when it's when they're pleasantly sh- surprised. Well, that's it, Brad. I'll save you from further reading. Thank you, <sighs> Arjun. Man, let me let, let's talk about the world today. So we're we're about six months from when you wrote this, and. Uh, you know, Avengers 4, which is actually entitled Avengers Endgame. It's It's been released. I don't know if you heard. Um, it's very, it's somewhat big. It's a fairly big movie. Um, but you were accurate about them not releasing stuff. Even over these six months, it, it was very minimal. Um, they showed, a, you know, a few different trailers and TV spots that really didn't reveal much of anything. Uh, there were very quick, um, I'd almost say like cropped, you know, shots of the full action and you don't really see much in these. You just see people walking, some people talking. Uh, You don't really get any kind of context as to what's going on, which is very different from all the marketing for Jurassic World so far via these two movies. Um, I, for one, have been very disappointed with the amount that we've seen. And I think that was my issue with Fallen Kingdom initially. I love Fallen Kingdom now, but when when me and you walked out of that movie and Chris, I was just like, man, we saw it already. And that's mm-hmm. a bummer. Oh, yeah. And I think it's kind of backfiring on them. I think they are noticing that. And I think it's a, a universal thing around all movies now, especially as we're seeing in, in this super hyped one. Um, and a lot of movies coming out, I think, recently, they're not over spoiling as much. And I do think the trend is going the other way. That The trend, it's cool not to show a lot. And I think... Um, a lot of movies are picking up on that, and a lot of companies are picking up on that. And I hope for Jurassic 3, when we get there, it's going to be the same idea where it's better not to see anything. Because I do think it backfired for them and for the audience, and they're feeling that backfiring because I think they got a lot of complaints about that. Probably for other movies, too, because they're, they're doing it for – Jurassic just kind of fell in that time where they were doing that for a lot of movies, I think. Um, and now they're, like, learning from that. So I, I hope we'll be okay. I don't know. It won't be as bad. I don't know. Um, right now, as we're talking, uh, there's there's a few trailers out um, for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, I think is, is the title, and also Hobbs and Shaw, which is a spinoff for Fast mm-hmm. and Furious. And that Hobbs and Shaw trailer, I'll, I'll tell you what, that's the entire movie. Oh, it come is on. literally the entire movie. And guess who makes that? universal so yeah it's not looking good it's not looking good folks um i mean the movie looks great hobbs and shaw looks like it's a blast and i will see it no matter what and i honestly don't care if they give away the entirety of that plot um it's not really a movie where i like i'm gonna feel all spoiled and everything um but jurassic i feel like i would be i would really feel ripped off if i if i got the entirety of of a potential final movie or, or where I don't know where they're going to go from there, but um, I I would be really upset if that's the route they take, but knowing universal, I think that's the route they're going to go. Um, and like I said, Godzilla, I think that's a Warner brothers release, but they're releasing as far as I can tell so much of that movie. You see a lot of the big set pieces and action moments. Um, and like I said, Hobbs and Shaw is legit. Like, it's it's maybe like a two minute and forty second trailer. It's so much of the movie. I I'm kind of like blown away by how much they revealed. That's so sad. Yeah, but I think you know it all depends on the type of movie. Hobbs and Shaw I think can maybe get away with that. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of surprises as far as that's concerned. Um, but I think in a movie with surprises, you got to take the route of of a star Wars or Avengers yeah. and Marvel um, and be simple about it. Like, like Arjun said, people are going to show up. It's Jurassic. They've made over a yeah. billion dollars each time here. And 
they can re- they can rely on us to be there and uh, show up and watch the movie, pay the money. Just leave us a little bit in the dark, please. Be yes, a little bit more cause... covert with your filming as well. Don't really reveal all that stuff like you usually do. Um, and uh, as far as the marketing is concerned, just let us enjoy the movie. Because I remember a big complaint. Everyone was hyped up about Jeff Goldblum, but then they already saw all his scenes in the trailers. Like That was yeah. the worst thing ever to do that. And then the whole um, montage at the end we saw in trailers too. So you saw the whole movie. You saw the whole end of the movie in trailers. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They showed plenty of the Indoraptor, you know, like, fighting blue for? and yeah, the auction stuff was in there. All this stuff was in there. The the explosions, like they could have literally stopped at the volcano and just not showed anything from the final elements, and we still would have showed up, and it would oh, have yeah. been an amazing surprise to see. Well, oh, wait, we're leaving the island very yeah. shortly into the movie. What? Then you'd have no idea where you're going. It yes, been that's beautiful. Is not knowing anything about where you're going, and I think yeah. this, like Fallen Kingdom, really would have shocked people if you didn't reveal anything about the Indoraptor. Um, you didn't need that in your marketing to sell that movie. There was plenty of dinosaurs on the in the rampage away from the volcano and and you know all that. So maybe it wouldn't have seemed like a very varied movie because you basically have a few scenes on the island and that's it but i think they could have sold it with that alone well i do remember when that trailer first came out just the volcano part um and everyone kind of was mad they're like oh this is the same thing it's so boring it's so stupid and as soon as the second trailer with the mansion stuff in it came out everyone was more interested in it so that's yeah. a double-edged sword there uh i don't know yeah i don't know how you fix it or how you sell a movie anymore just i people, i would just show go up. see it just yeah. go see it trust us go see it that's it I'm exactly sorry. yeah I, I always wonder how how a movie would do like like star wars or, or marvel they can handle it jurassic i think could handle it um but i think like we would show up for these things with with literally a title screen that just has the name of the yeah. movie i mean honestly though think about that if if star wars or marvel or this um avengers movie if they did just do that the intrigue and the the shock value of people and reviewers and YouTubers and all that, that'd be like, I have to see what happens because they're not telling me anything and I, I have to know what this is. Yeah. Like if they really went that way, the talk and the suspense, I feel like that happened with Avengers. Like that's what happened with this Endgame movie was nobody knew anything, but they knew it was going to be a big deal and the hype got built up so much by just knowing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it would be great, just a black screen with some dinosaur sounds and some screaming and, you know, vehicles or, you know, something happening, and then just a title. Like, that's all I need. Literally a 10-second trailer, and I think people would show up. And I think, like you said, people would be so intrigued. Why are they not showing this? Is this a bad movie? Are they showing it because it's not looking good? I got to see. I got to go check it out. Or, you know, maybe it's going to be awesome. Like secrets, they can't yeah. really, they can't, there's so many secrets and things that they just can't even show in a trailer. So I have to know what they are. Kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. It would be amazing. Hopefully they, yeah. they listen to this and they follow this, this mentality, but it's very doubtful knowing universal. They want to sell their stuff and give it all away. Mm. But uh, thanks Arjun. Let's move over here to a voicemail from Yaroslav. Hey, Brad, Jen. It's uh, Yaroslav. Um, just want to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> so I have a question uh just came to my head. Um, I'm not sure how they would pull this off, um, but what would you guys think about if uh, the next Jurassic World film, um, you know, instead of picking up immediately where Owen and Claire... Uh, <clears throat> at least not not where they pick up from uh, the last film, but uh, starting the film with them. What do you guys uh, think about if they just introduce like a new cast of people? And- what is going on here? Because every time we do a mailbag, there's always an ongoing theme, isn't there? I know it's it, bizarre. <laughs> so like tonight, <laughs> it's just like 
Let's talk some theme parks and let's talk the beginning of Jurassic World yeah. 3. I love it. I, I don't know. I, I swear I don't like screen these and put them all together. Like these are the ones that are talking about the beginning of the movie. Let's do those tonight. But uh, let's listen. Just kind of told their story and, you know, um, just kind of followed them. And then we kind of, you know, catch up with Claire and Owen, let's say like uh, 25, 30 minutes into the film. You know, like don't I like that. Uh, make the, you know, you know, not so it's like a series that we're just, you know, following just uh, these two characters. I know it is kind of their film in the, in the Jurassic World um, film so far, but um, I don't know. What would you guys think about, like, having them kind of introduce a little bit later in the film, kind of like, um, I'm trying to compare a movie that's done that. Um, I, don't know, I can't think of it. Oh, maybe like, uh, <laughs> you know, Iron Man, how he was uh, introduced. I think like 25, 30 minutes into the Avengers or whatever. Like it took some time before you saw Iron Man show up. So like, I don't know. What would you guys think about that? Like a new set of characters. We've got to just follow. Also, don't don't consider that Endgame spoilers. This was recorded way before that. So obviously he said <laughs> Happy New Year. So if he's saying that in April, I don't know what's up, Yaroslav. So uh, <laughs> all their short story, you know, not like prologue links, how we've had with, um, the previous Jurassic films where it's just a different group of people, but I mean, actual fundamental characters that they're going to end up meeting hmm. eventually. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, also, hopefully we have a great year for Jurassic material. I'm sure we will. And, uh, keep up the good work, guys. Thanks. Well, yeah, man. That's, that's hilarious because that you almost like took what I said, um, before and then changed it and said, not just the prologue, like like we were talking about earlier, but more than that, 30 minutes, maybe more uh, of these new characters that we're introduced to that will maybe uh, the, the story will rely on them. But then you introduce, reintroduce Claire and Owen somehow um, and, and let's say Maisie, too, because I feel like, you know, she has to be a part of this as well. Um, I like that idea. I really do. I think that's a good one. Hmm. That means less screen time for my Claire. <laughs> I don't feel good about that. I mean, no. I guess from a story point of view, it'd be unique and interesting to do that. But no, I want my I want my babe and her in the whole movie. <laughs> you know what I could see is if they did that. Um, if they did some other facility um, somewhere else in the world, um, for instance. We, you know, we learned a lot about Jurassic World live tour, um, both of us actually, when we were at the uh, event, and we we learned about these facilities around the world. Um, so maybe we could have a story like that, where it's another facility, in gen or not, somewhere else, maybe, um, and it's a story about hey, these people are not necessarily good, but there is somebody in there who actually has a good heart, who doesn't want to see these things happen, who who maybe has a change of mind. And they, well, I'm, I feel like I'm literally describing The Force Awakens. Whoops. Um, <laughs> that's literally what happens in that in that movie. Is like, there's a guy, he's a stormtrooper. He was doing <laughs> these bad things, but then he has a change of heart at the very last second and says, I'm going to stop this. And so that's what happens. Um, imagine that, though, for, for this movie. is like you get introduced to a new character or set of characters that are trying to take down this facility or, you know, realize what they're doing is not good. Um, the latest thing that the the bad guys want them to do is against their 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 beliefs and maybe a little bit too far past what they've been doing. I could see that playing out, and then you know we we you know cut to Claire and Owen and Maisie. Um, I would I would be into that idea. I think. I mean, I don't hate that concept, but then I'm trying to think of time and everything we have to squish into this movie. And if we're bringing back old characters and bringing back those references and doing all that, I don't know if there's enough time to really give 20 minutes or something to another facility or another new group of characters doing something. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but I don't want to take it away from like our main crew and Another thing we've talked about, I think, before is how these main people, Claire and Owen, fit in the new where this story is going. Because I, it seems like their story has ended, except for the Maisie portion. But for the most part, with the dinosaurs, I think their story has pretty much is over. They have nothing to do with them now at all. And um, 
so it would make sense to go to a different facility and people that actually do have to do with these dinosaurs. But that's where Colin, I feel like, has written himself in a hole because it only it makes more sense story wise to go to other characters, but yet he has his poor characters that he kind of has to write in this film. So it's a weird thing. I don't know how to go with it. My gut's telling me, no, I want all the Bryce in the movie. But my other side's being like, well, that would make more sense. I don't know. This is like literally like word for word what everybody in Star Wars is saying at this moment. Um, I know I, I do the comparison so often, but look, this is so match like matched up right here. When you're talking about the uh, the rise of Skywalker, the final movie here in the Skywalker saga, they have to restart the story because at the end of the last movie, it kind of is like an ending point. Um, most of the threads were kind of left alone, like that's it. And then they'll restart from there and they have to reintroduce a new story. They have to wrap up previous threads and the new story and introduce new things that are that are happening and, and uh, reintroduce maybe characters from the past and 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 close out stories from the past and 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 the the new stories. So there's so much going on in that movie. I don't know how they're going to do it. And then you have this literally the same thing here. And especially if we're going to talk about reintroducing people from the past, wrapping up this Claire and Owen thing, talking about the clones. Hey, I'm not talking about Star Wars. There could be clones in that one as well, too. So keep your <laughs> eyes out. Who knows? But this is going to be a, a mess, I think. Either one of these could be overbloated and 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 all that. But I know if if Endgame's teach Endgame uh, teaches us anything, it's you can fit so much in three hours. So. I say push the limits on these these times here and and push them all yeah. both up, all of them out to three hours. People will will pay for it and they'll sit there. Don't I mean, be worried about that. Show I think we all agree that the movies can be easily longer, like easily if they want to tell more stories and more in depth stories. We'll happily sit through those three hours, like happily. So that's oh, yeah. something I think everyone can agree on. But I want I I want I know I'm losing the grasp on my Claire focused trilogy like so bad it's already far going off the rails the other way. But I'm still hope aimlessly hoping to hold on to that that she has some pivotal thing. It's gonna happen in this next movie. I don't know. I'm probably the last worst person to talk to when it comes to these kind of things because that's where I'm going. That's what I want. Well, so that's not what I'm going to get. What cli- kind of closure for Claire could there be that would make you happy? Do you think? I don't do you know? know. That's why Fallen Kingdom threw me so much because it. I don't know. Like her story ended in the last film. She has no park. She has no job. She has no connection to anybody. So there's no Mizrani. Like there's nothing. She has even the evolution of Claire didn't leave any little seeds of anything. Like there's nothing there's no reason why she should be in this next movie and that threw me so much and fallen kingdom threw me in that way so much that i honestly cannot even answer that question well i mean i think the same could be said for the end of jurassic world there's really no reason she should be in fallen kingdom um Mm -hmm. no i i took it as like she still has a deep responsibility with with jurassic world though like she still is connected there are still dinosaurs and they are in danger and they are they, they were kind of her thing that she grew up with, not grew up, but like that she had a handle. And um, yeah, I can see the connection there. Not maybe not in the way that Colin did it with the whole 180 personality change, but I can still <laughs> see the connection here, though. Like it's so out of her hands. Like there's there's it's so out farther than falling. If Fallen, if you don't think Fallen Kingdom had anything to do with her, this one is even less like this is so far out of her zone. Well, I think I, I think I it'll come know. down to to parenting or something like that. Like I know that sounds lame, but like it, it was a minor thread that was opened up in Jurassic World. You know, when when she talked to her sister and she's like, "It'll happen for you." You know, just just wait. Or basically, so there there's that. You know, that's some closure, I guess, on that storyline. Maybe she could have a happy ending with with uh, oh, with Maisie. Man, that- you know. Okay, I still I want think... Owen to get killed off, so maybe it would just be Claire and Maisie. <laughs> okay, so you know what? Then you just asked me what my ideal. It would not be that. <laughs> <It would laughs> I know, right? It's, it sounds so like just boring and vanilla. It does I? I like her her boss lady 
thing. I like her, her, um, she's, 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 uh, that one, like, you know what I'm trying to say, like that strong boss lady owning it and just being in charge, being of importance, being looked to as of importance and being an important player in the game. I, I don't, I don't care what kind of player she is, just an important player in the game. And I'm of, of, player where other players look at her and either blame her or depend on her or something that just puts her at this important level and um, every movie now since I feel like she's lost she dropped a level of importance and I miss that I I don't care how she gets it but I want that level of importance and power somehow like her to have some kind of power and I felt like she lost that whenever Mills did that whole double crossing thing because I I think she had it in the mansion she had it at that point I just wish she would have been smarter and had a backup plan or something like that because then right at that point is when she lost it and she has not gotten it back since and now she has no value to anyone in charge of these dinosaurs and and no one's even gonna look at her so if she does fall into that mother thing and that parenting role i mean my goodness what a shame what a fall for a character if that's <laughs> what happens not that i'm against like motherhood and that but it's just from where she was and what she had and and even in the evolution of claire like what she worked to and her goals and her motives and that whole background and that whole character to go to that in jurassic 3 i mean that's that's just an anticlimactic like nobody cares art well, yeah, and that that's heartbreaking. I agree with that. I think I think it's it's not very interesting, but also that is kind of the arc of Jurassic Park for Grant. It's basically the same thing. Is like you know he he finally accepts it. it. It's it's something he can think about now. Um, but it you know it didn't really work out for him as far as Jurassic Park three was concerned. Um, but I yeah I don't know. It's just not that that interesting to me. Um. I don't know. I really don't know where to go from there, but Claire. Oh, you could maybe say like um, the threads that that were potentially opened up in the evolution of Claire. There was a little discussion about politics and stuff like that for mm-hmm. her. Would that be interesting for you? Is is seeing this failed theme park operator, um, somebody who maybe maybe people don't know but that she went to the island and tried to save these dinosaurs and now has a clone child um do you think that would be satisfying to see her go into politics to somehow salvage these dinosaurs i think putting her i don't know if she's going for salvaging i don't know what her motives are now but putting her in any place of power for any reason even if she does that to protect Maisie or does it to protect something like that or whatever her moves are i don't know but just putting her in a place of power and having her a level of importance back and and having a level over people and having a hand over people and having people to kind of have to deal with her to get to something else and just have yeah that, that that level that strength level of power and not a mothering thing and i know that's where they're going because yeah you're right with grant and all of that but I don't know. I miss that other side. I miss that dominating side. And it was in Evolution of Claire. And, it w- and I love those back pages, the last couple of chapters. And I love that whole thing. And so if she does have to go into politics to make that happen, then yeah, I'm on board. Just don't make her, <laughs> don't water her down. Like she has an edge. I know it's somewhere in there is some kind of edge and, and hunger for that kind of control of business and power and situations and if she has to go that route for that then okay just so she goes a route to get there and not just floats in the background and like hugs Maisie the whole time yeah I don't know Uh, that doesn't necessarily sound all that thrilling to me either so again this is like several scenarios today that were just like well, I don't know. It doesn't sound all that great. So yeah. maybe Jurassic World 3 is going to be terrible. Who knows? It could be. I mean, because if you think, because Jurassic is about power balance. And it yeah. Is, it's, it is. And I think that would fit her well because she does have that power balance. And I would love to see that expanded upon and just, just like throw them back. Because I feel like that was a missed opportunity with Mills. It was there a little bit, but I feel like that could have really been a, a heavy power balance struggle that I, I think I've talked about many times on other podcasts. I'm not going to bring that back up, but um, that that kind of balance and trying to one up each other and trying to 
this like chess. It's like a mind chess game. And that kind of thing really fascinates me. And then to put that in a Jurassic movie, because you know the stakes are so high. That's another thing we need, we need stakes. We need high stakes. And to have stakes like that, and then to have that mind chess game as well, then to have a level of power of importance and control over a lot of things, like that's, I'm fine. Like that, they were in business. Like I don't care where we go with the story. As long as those dynamics are there and Claire's at the top of it, I'm there. That's so, it. So here's my theory. So Claire is running for some sort of office and it, it she's got this secret, a deep, dark secret in her closet somewhere that she is now uh, mothering a, a clone child and she doesn't want that to get out. So Muldoon's son and Nedry's nephew are out there investigating and they come across the clone aspect, reveal the the thing and blow the waters open and then she does she she gets the office still somehow. I don't know. Uh this is where it is. And there's no dinosaurs in the movie. It's just a political thriller. <laughs> um that's what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? Is that a good story? <laughs> No dinosaurs. They, they killed them all off in the they, yeah. They're gone now. Yeah, they died. They died already. Muldoon's son definitely took care of them. And, and, you know, I don't know. That's what happened. Muldoon's other son. So there's two sons. One's an investigator and one's a hunter for, for a job. Sound good? I think so. After two hours, hunter. anything sounds good right about now. <laughs> I know. I mean, we're trying to make this movie sound really good, but we're having trouble. Oh, That's yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, we certainly have more questions, but I'm going to stop it there. That's enough for today. Um, I know you guys uh, on the survey said, hey, longer episodes are good. Also said longer episodes are bad. So I don't know. I'm going to just do longer episodes. And if you complain, then sorry. That's just what happened. You know, we just we can't help it. Uh-uh. We I mean, do we this every 30 time. 30 minutes on the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. You know, you kicked it off great, man. That was perfect. <laughs> and then we talked about theme parks the rest of the time, pretty much. I know. Uh, so I am sure, guess what? Next time, we're going to probably talk about a lot of this as well. So thank you, Jen, for joining me yeah. for the return of the Jurassic Mailbag here in May. Uh, we, we got to skip over February, so we didn't have to talk about how that's pronounced. <laughs> Just say it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, May is a pretty simple one to to say. Well, I feel like we're back in full force because we talked 30 minutes on a question, the first question, and then I went on a clear rant and we talked about Star Wars and the theme park. So we are right on track with what we do. You just described every previous mailbag. So yeah, Yeah. it's perfect. Um, Jen, where can everybody find you online? Oh my goodness. Practically everywhere at this point because I'm crazy. Um, you could find me at <laughs> Jennifer underscore Lynn 89. You can find me at the Bryce Dallas Howard Network at BDH Network, which now you can also find us at the Howard Headline, which is the press page for the Bryce Dallas Howard Network. Then you can also find me at the Jurassic Vault, which I'm creating a gallery <laughs> for all these Jurassic pictures that have been lost on the internet with my logins as well so you can find me basically everywhere, and i'm so tired i love it if you if you couldn't do anything else you started <laughs> doing more things it, it well, that's i i get I it i get it i i don't have control of my life it, <laughs> it just keeps expanding i don't know what happened i don't yes. know how, i just woke up one day and i'm like i have seven twitter accounts <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no i i get that feeling because i have i was saying the same thing today i'm in 400 group chats and you know many facebook pages or groups and oh man it's out of control and the twitter pages yeah we we've all got several i think in the jurassic community <laughs> yes and email accounts so many email accounts yeah but you're you're killing it as always i love seeing all the new additions and the the jurassic vault stuff has been really awesome loving that and i just saw Thanks. the other one pop up so i'm excited to find out more bryce news via that that oh, page yeah. Yeah, we're doing a whole lot of stuff. Mobile, that's a mobile compatibility one, which is a big deal because my other site wasn't very mobile friendly. So this one's a mobile friendly. And then the vault, we're doing all kind of, every picture in the world is going to be in that gallery. So, <laughs> well, it's going to be awesome. We're going to see you back in June. So June's going to be a big month, I'm sure. June. Wait, what? How are, how is that possible? Wow. Are you Whoa. kidding me? I'm, I'm not ready. I, I know I said May m- many times already, but I am not ready for June. I can't even function. Is that That's... the right? Is that the right month that comes after May? May, June? Yeah. Okay. 
How? I don't it know is, if we're prepared. We're going to be a year away from Fallen Kingdom premiering. Whew. Wow. But we're a year closer to Jurassic World 3. That's going to be thrilling. It's going to be very thrilling. Political <laughs> It's going to be more thrilling than we can explain. <laughs> Colin, I hope you've listened to what we said and then don't do those things because it'll be a good movie if you don't do those things. <laughs> For once, you know, because before we had all these exciting things that we could say, and now we're like, well, don't do what we say. So maybe maybe it'll work out just, if he doesn't just, do what we say. Just do the one thing, fan service. Give us the fan service, okay. and we'll show up. And no trailers. Nothing. Right. <laughs> all right, Jen. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the 187th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Of course, a big thanks to Jennifer for joining me here today in the Jurassic Mailbag. Of course, this is one of our favorite segments here on the podcast. I think you guys all love it, and the uh, the the emotion, the fandom, everything shines through in each and everything that you guys send in, whether it's a voicemail, MP3, email, any of it. We can just tell how much effort you put into uh, sending us these messages, and we really appreciate it. So make sure to keep them coming. So like I said, send us those voicemails, 732-825-7763, or email us, JurassicParkPod at gmail.com, or hit up our website and go to our contact form. Uh, So yeah, like I said, there's already so much stuff in the backlog. We're going to be covering even more of your emails and voicemails and whatnot. So make sure to send them in right away to have a shot to be in the next Jurassic Mailbag. All right, so we're definitely going to keep the trend going by going into some of these ratings and reviews here. Now, um, you guys have been killing it over on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you haven't already, please go leave us a review. And if you leave a written review, I will be reading them here on the show, showcasing everybody that puts in the time and the effort to go and help us out just a little bit over on iTunes. It really means a lot to to us to see your great comments and to know that you are are suggesting this podcast to people that are searching for it out on the internet so again we really appreciate it and to showcase it we're going to read this one here uh this is from jeeper 99 it says great podcasts helps me through and the, the subject got cut off there so it just helps you through you know that's all you ask for right uh the the message here says love the show it's obvious how much work brad puts into it and it pays off I, I guess, sure. Uh, <laughs> nothing helps me get through a workday like listening to a new episode. I've always been a huge Jurassic Park fan, and that grew even larger with the revival of the series. I can't wait for Fallen Kingdom. Keep up the great work. Um, so thank you, Jeeper99. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, it, look, this show is a lot of hard work, and that's why, you know, we did end up taking that hiatus. But, like, look, I love doing it. I love... Uh, recording these segments and editing the editing is actually so much fun for me i really love uh just creating an audio experience for you guys so you have something fun to listen to each and every week um that's that's part of the fun i think of of this all so and i hope you really enjoyed fallen kingdom i mean i know it's been a while now since it's been out so Hopefully it lived up to your expectations and uh, you have something to look forward to here going forward with Jurassic World 3. I'm excited. I know a lot of you guys are and I hope Jeeper99 is as well. Uh, the next one here is uh, from Yaros428. So that's that's our buddy. We actually just ho- heard him in the, uh, in the mailbag just before, Yaroslav. So he says, all things Jurassic in one pod. The message here is, been listening to Brad's podcast for well over a year now, and always look forward to the fun Jurassic discussions and segments every Monday. A very creative pod with frequent contribu- uh, contributions, man, can't read, uh, from community members. <laughs> Anyone's voice can be heard. Very recommended. Two thumbs up. Thanks, dude. You know, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I know we talk all the time, but it still feels good to have, you know, your friends and, and whoever uh, recommend the show and talk kindly about it. And yeah, you're right. It is a very creative group of people and contributors. Um, and, and you're right. Anybody's voice can be heard. And that's something that is so cool, I think, about this show, if I must say so myself, is the fact that 
anybody can be involved, whether it's the, the mailbag and you want to contribute to the mailbag or create your own segment. And um, I know I, I have some emails in my email uh, box that uh, came in over the hiatus. I still have not gotten through all of the emails yet, uh, but I know people are, have been reaching out to create their own segments still. So that is really, really awesome. And I know um, our survey, a lot of people asked for more guests and more uh, content creators and stuff like that. So yeah, we're, we're keeping it going. So if you guys have anything you want to do to produce a segment here or just look, you don't even have to produce a segment. You could just Send in some audio, and I can just play it sometime. It doesn't have to be a mailbag question or or any kind of question. It can just be a thought or a statement or anything. You just want to say hi. You could just say hi. It doesn't matter. Um, So if you guys want to submit anything in the future, make sure to do so. Just send us that email and let us know. You want to contribute in some way or form, and we'll make it happen. But again, thank you, everybody, for the reviews over on iTunes. Make sure to keep them coming, and we will still be reading them as long as we can here. But I hope you guys have a great week ahead of you with all kinds of Jurassic stuff filled in there. I know we are a little far out from all kinds of updates here, whether it's new movie news or even the theme park stuff. Who knows? That could happen at any point. Um, But keep the Jurassic stuff alive in your life each and every week. Have fun with it. Be kind to everybody out on the Internet. It's a scary place out there. So just be happy and be friendly to everybody that celebrates Jurassic Park. Whether it's the way you celebrate it or not, be kind. Be friendly to everybody out there. That's all that matters. All right, let's play out that outro. Saddle up. Let's get this movable feast underway. Please give us a follow on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod. And myself, at Brad Jost. Also on Facebook and Instagram, at Jurassic Park Podcast. Don't forget to join the Jurassic Park Podcast group on Facebook. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, our website, or wherever else podcasts are found. So please be sure to subscribe. Also, don't miss our toy hunts and reviews, in-depth bonus content, live streams, gameplay, events and theme park coverage, and so much more on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We will read your reviews at the end of every episode, so please be sure to spare no expense. Don't miss us on the web at JurassicParkPodcast.com, where you'll find today's episode show notes, wonderful articles, bios from our contributors, and so much more. If you want to get a hold of us, you can fill out the contact form on our website or email us, JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. We're always looking for new segments, contributors, mailbag submissions, or anybody who just wants to say hello. Feel free to call our voicemail line at any time to leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening, and enjoy! Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.